Hey, bikeaholics, do you have your grip, grip, grip on? You know, the biker gripper. Simply the best motorcycle, cell phone, GPS, radar detector, and EFI tuner mount on the market. Oh, it grips so tight. That's right, 18 pounds grip strength to be exact. So sleek and strong. That's right, fits American or metric motorcycles and comes in black or chrome. So what are you waiting for? Get your grip on. You can get the Biker Gripper exclusively in the Law Abiding Biker store. Head over to www.lawabidingbiker.com slash store and get your grip on. That's right, Bike Colleagues. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at Biker Planet. It's more than just the largest niche biker dating site. It's an entire social community of bikers. Make sure to check it out using our custom link so you can get all the perks. That's right. Use lawabidingbiker.com forward slash biker planet. Here we are, boys. Oh, yeah. Just getting right into it on Blab. Another live show for you, bikeaholics. Mm-hmm. Welcome, everybody out here that's watching, listening to podcasts, whichever it is. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99%. That's right. Large and in charge more than any time in history, guys. If you're listening, you are part of what we call the biker revolution. No doubt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anybody want to say the last part? What are you waiting? Give what you are you hint? waiting for, bikeaholics? Mount up. Let us take you on another wild ass ride. That is right. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your high tech redneck. Mm-hmm. That was the one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, girl. <laughs> go. Every time you do that, it makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. Oh, of course, that's Big Daddy Kane right there, guys. Wave to the, he just did, gave you the old, he's on the sofa there. If you're watching live via Blab. And then, of course, over there. Mm-hmm. You, that's right. See, he does it so much better, doesn't so, he? That was the extended remix mm. right there. Mm. Dang right, guys. So it is uh, obviously me in the studio, Lurch and Big Daddy on the sofa. we got an awesome topic for you guys that has been highly requested. It's been a lot of work over the years that we have done for you, over the year, I should say, the last year. Um, uh, we've done a bunch of uh, stereo systems in uh, specifically for 2014 in newer Harley, although I dare say that even if you're listening and or watching right now and you have a bike that's not uh, 2014 or newer Harley, you're still going to grab a shitload of information out of this episode. I think there's going to be a lot of tidbits of info and things that will even relate to uh, to your particular bike. So just all about Harleys and uh, uh, four specific aftermarket uh, audio systems that we've installed, did videos on. We'll break that down in a minute. Lurch. Yes. Been a day in filming in the shop. Mm-hmm. You want to briefly talk about day. what we filmed that's coming out? We, we oh, okay. The, the videos aren't even in edit yet, but we just filmed them today and they will be coming out. Yeah, we did the raw footage. We still need to do some intros and whatnot, but we uh, filmed a bunch of uh, free videos because we like to keep 95% or percent of our con Tent. Tent. Content. Right? Mm-hmm. My brain just locked up there for a second. Yeah, did I was about you, to say contact. Dude, you even went cross eyed. That was I, weird shit. <laughs> you know? Like to keep 95% of our con Tent. Tent. He wasn't, he's not paying attention. I am con. <laughs> the, the content free. So I've learned too many wrenches did, today. He's yeah. seeing double. We did a bunch of small projects on my bike. <laughs> uh, we flipped the right shock over the rear shock um, because it's upside down because some lackey at the Harley Davidson uh, shop there, the factory, if you will, put that sucker on upside down, which does not necessarily. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't affect the how the bike rides. But when you go to put on accessories uh, like a uh, sissy bar, it doesn't fit right because of the way that's mounted. So we flipped that thing over and showed you how to do that. We took the uh, my OS 450 Titan slip-ons apart and took the baffle wrap out of there uh, to make them just a little bit louder. And it sounds good. It's not ratty. It's not obnoxious. Just a little bit louder. Uh, we put some extended floor pans on my bike, which uh, moved the floor pans. Uh, floorboards, fo- floor boards, for some yeah. that don't know about them, yeah. Yeah, so the move the floor boards, but we replaced the floor pans and uh, moved it forward about an inch. 
We put an extended uh, rear brake lever so on my bike. So jealous. So jealous. Yeah, it helps for guys with uh, big feet and long legs. It gets that thing uh, forward and out of your way. And in true fashion, the instructions were not uh, that great. So we found out we had to do some extra steps, but don't worry about it. We filmed it. We'll show you how to do all that. We put a uh, Vanson Hines VO2 naked intake on my bike. Stage one, basically. Vanson Hines yep. version of a stage one. Mm-hmm. Is that about it? That's it that we did today. Yeah. And of course, we did the comparison um, before and after the packing's taken yes. out. Um, we did yes. some great videos comparison going down the road and just went above and beyond like we try to do for the community out there and those will all be free videos and me and lurch uh and and big daddy's here in the studio we all worked our regular jobs of course full time and just had a i know i had a really long stressful week and then man went to bed late last night and up and at it filming from early this morning all the way right up to where we could uh um, just eat some dinner and barely, and we'll talk about that, and then uh, um, and then right into this podcast live, and then we're going to do another one not live that will come out later. Um, so, yeah, you want to shout out to uh, our pizza provider for tonight? Any either of you? Our uh, first ever patron, Greg Axiola. He was our very first patron, uh-huh. and we've had him on the podcast. He uh, wanted to hook us up and uh, get some pizza. I think he offered that a little while ago. We checked in with him to see if he... Still wanted to do that, and he did, and he uh, hooked us up. We had some pizza before the podcast so that our bellies are full. And I might have had one piece too many. Yes. Yes, you may have. You may have. Um, I will say that uh, William Cody Case uh, was another patron that kind of started that, uh, was the first one to buy us pizza. And then Mm -hmm. Greg was like uh, a patron of ours, and he's like, that's a badass idea. And he hit me up and said, hey, next time you guys go live, email me. And so I emailed him with the phone number of the pizza place and told him what time we wanted delivered to the address. And, and, uh, bam, the pizza showed up here. It was awesome, Greg. And, uh, I'll say that Greg, uh, got a hold of me here just before we went live and he is very sick. Um, and he still did it. And he's so sick with sinus stuff that he can't even be uh, available to be on the live blab and, and chat tonight. So he said his apologies, but he'll hear this later as he listens to all our podcasts. And so, Thank you, Greg. Take care of yourself, and you'll be better by the time you hear this because this won't be out for a while in podcast format. All right. Um, also, we are live on Blab, guys. If you want to get hooked up, I always tell you head over to our live page, lawbidingbiker.com forward slash live. Over there on the right hand, upper right hand corner, there's an email list. The only email you will get by signing up for that list is when we go live. I send you an email the week of and usually the day of. There's a big, huge button that gives you the date and time, and then it says hit here, push here, watch live, and you can just push that button at the time we go live, and it takes you right to where you need to be here in Blab. You can chat right in Blab. I will mention that we have a seat uh, as we go through the episode. If you have something to say, reference the topic, and you have some input, well, we can bring you on briefly uh, in a seat. It's basically like a call-in. We'll try to get to you as we can. Um, And if you don't have anything specific for the subject matter, well, if we have time at the end, we'll just open up general uh, blab seat and if you just want to say hi real quick or something that's as time allows big daddy yes came up uh today wrote up for us and and uh he's been involved in the afternoon portion of the filming and uh then big daddy's gonna just dedicate a man you're gonna crash here tonight or what i'm gonna crash here just because it's uh about 20 mile per hour winds through the uh valley there back to my place and so i might as well stay here and, and it, plus it's going to be below freezing with 20 mile an hour yeah, winds, right yeah a even, little more than just wind yeah. even riding the couch that's what i'm calling my ultra now the couch because mm-hmm. i'm with the triumph and then with the uh chola yeah i'm like man this thing is like uh, this is like luxury but the problem is man we got we're gonna film we decide we're gonna film something tomorrow too so we'll just stay and do some more work Yep. Rick has been, uh, Big Daddy's been super busy with the store and uh, all you guys that order stuff at the Law Abiding Biker store, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store, the headsets and the biker grippers and the t-shirts and all the other paraphernalia over there um, that we have mugs we did have. We're bringing a new mug. Yeah, anyways, brand new mug. Yeah, that should be exciting. We yeah. uh, Rick got us a new mug coming, so uh, a little more biker friendly and durable, right? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to be really cool. Instead of being just a regular coffee mug, which we loved, and apparently everybody loved them because we sold like 46 of we them did. in less than three weeks. But this new one is going to be one that you can fit inside right on your bike, on, on a beverage carrier, right on your handlebars. So 
And I'm already already looking into seeing if maybe we can even stock a uh, beverage carrier. Mm. Um, we probably won't make any money on it. It'll probably just be a wash, but Ryan doesn't want to hear that. But if we can just get something that is not necessarily uh, white labeled for us, but we can at least sell you the coffee mug and then you can have some way to store it to, as a courtesy, maybe as a convenience, but we'll, we'll see about that. No, awesome. And Rick, I've thanked him in the past, guys. Uh, we'll move forward, but I just, he runs a store. So if you guys are buying stuff from the store, you're not talking to me. That's all Rick now. Um, and then obviously you guys talk to Lurch a lot. He's obviously very uh, hard work and integral part of this operation. He's got his MacBook Pro uh, that we got him some time ago and he's over there on the sofa and he's he's running a ton of the emails and the patron communications and the Facebook. Rick is very involved in that private Facebook group. So there you go, guys. One of the, one of I, I get going. I, I just got to thank you guys all the time because, and I know people get probably tired of hearing it, but uh, really publicly, these guys are, are making problem, making this operation happen. It's not just me. Trust me. Yeah. What up? When are we coming out with some shot glasses? Somebody wants to know the, well, somebody said we need to get some shot glasses. There you go, Rick. So Rick is Put our, that on the list, but you know, and, and I'll look into it. Yeah. He'll definitely look into <laughs> it. Um, and, and uh, um, awesome. No, that's great. Um, we'll put on the list. We get asked for a lot of that stuff, but Obviously, it just depends on what we can get it for, white label it, what it costs to ship, the dirt. That was the problem. Real quick, we had a problem with glass mugs, shipping them. It takes a lot of extra to ship those, and these, they, sometimes the stems break off them, mm-hmm. so we're going to a different one. But Rick will definitely look into it. If that's what you guys want, trust me, we listen, and uh, we will definitely, he's putting it on his list, and uh, making a mental note, and we'll look at that. We've got the shop shirts and t-shirts, and we're going to keep adding that store, guys. So Rick is working hard at that. It just takes time to bring on those products. Lurch, why don't you talk real quick? We always mention a new free video, even though it's been out a while, we like to mention them. It's up there on the, the or on, I guess you got your MacBook Pro. Are you I on, do. are you on Blab uh, chat? No, Rick? because I just got my phone. So I'm just following this. So you don't have Blab chat. Mm-mm. Okay. So Big Daddy apparently is not going to be on Blab chat tonight. Do you want to get on my phone and do it? While we're, we can well, pause. I'll try to do it on this, but it's just such a small screen. I can't do it very well, but right. I can give you my phone just, just cause guys like having you in the chat, you know? Um, sorry. I I'll work on it. Yeah, that's fine. All right. You want to tell them about our video there, Lurch? We got a new one out. How to access view and clear Harley diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs. People refer to them as, and that's for all years and models. We had uh, several bikes that we, uh, made the video with. So check that out. It's one of our free videos. It'll help you, uh, you got any issues with your bike you can go in and look at the codes before you take it to a dealer so they don't rip you off uh or you at least give you the ability to go in and clear a code see if it comes back see if it's really a problem so the video would be very helpful check it out yep people are loving that video it's one of our very popular and we uh it is a great video and uh it was lurch's debut video um where was he, it it was the very first time you did the intro to the oh, video yeah so i i made note of that so yeah there you go straight from lurch all right we'll get into our main topic we just want to tell you that this episode is made possible, of course, by the following patrons. Who wants to shout out to these patrons? We're going to do six of them, so run through them. Okay. So we got Gary Anderson and no address, but thank you, Gary. We got Ray Walters of La Vista, Nebraska, and Chris Chitworth of Fayetteville, Georgia. Chitwood. Chitwood. Sorry, I don't see that well. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we've also got some patrons, uh, Paul Dillman of Winter Springs, Florida, Edward Lake of Watsonville, California, and Tim Allard of Milford, New Hampshire. And I got to tell you, because these guys, I send them shirts and they order stuff. That's I recognize right. all these names. Yep, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So Big Daddy, he, he uh, runs a store, but he also does way more than that, obviously. But he uh, sends all our new patrons that, that pledge at a certain level. He sends them. He's the, he's the guy that is uh, packaging up your t-shirt and getting it down to you and some stickers and, and those rewards for becoming a patron. That's right. If you want to become a patron and you want to get in the private Facebook group and you want to get t-shirt and there's other benefits all the way up to, depending on what level you can see here, Chris Chitwood was a top tier. He gets free access to any of our high end for purchase videos. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-E-R, excuse me, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Ton of stuff going on in that private Facebook group. It's amazing. And in fact, I wanted to bring up something funny on that, but I'll look it up while we're, while we're talking. There was a funny, sometimes I see stuff in that private Facebook group and I'll be working. You guys know, cause these guys put in the hours too and you're tired and you're just like, oh my God, I just did the regular job and now I got to do all this. 
And I'm sure Rick and Matt are the same way. I got to answer all these emails, you know, Matt, or I got to get audio edited. And then you'll be in the private Facebook group where I just like to spend some time and smile with all our patrons and get to know them better. And I'll see a funny post. There's some funny posts that you're like, that's funny. You like it. You, then there's some that you're like, dude, that for whatever reason, it resonates with you. And you're like, that is fucking funny. And uh, it just really uh, gives me motivation then to, to keep working. So uh, if I can find it during this episode, I will. All right, main topic. Let's dive right in. This is an open discussion by all of us here. Um, we have. I'll just set it up for you really quick, and then we can. It's really going to be roundtable. I want you guys to really help steer the ship on this one because you guys have so much knowledge on this. The reason I brought us three here in the studio together is because we were all out of the lab crew. We were the ones all integ- integrally. In- See now, I can't say it. I'm not going to use it. We were all very involved. Integral. Integral, yes, in, in in this process. There you go. When you can't uh, say it, you just use a different word. Um, but uh, we we all did these systems and we all communicated and we all purchased them together and researched them. And so us three in the studio are the ones that really have this uh, dialed in as far as aftermarket. So the four systems that we're going to break down now, we did a video on this. Ooh, do you guys remember? Let me look it up. Do you guys remember the URL to the... I did a YouTube video already on this explaining. I'll remember look it, where I'll I broke it up while you're talking. Thank you. Right there. Where I broke it down. Oh, there it is. System right, right here. There. So I already did a YouTube video and it's getting just a ton of hits, guys. It has been overwhelmingly popular. Uh, we weren't expecting it. Um, let me, in fact, look here while we have it. Let me just go to YouTube. Welcome. And back. I will put pause. So here's the video. Bikeaholics, Ryan Erlocker here, law abiding bike. Um, yeah, it's getting tons, tons of hits and tons of comments. But anyways, you can get it. Oh, yeah. Now, see, I lost the URL there, Rick. Good. Are you looking for the one where you talked about all four of them? Yes, the it URL. Is waiting, waiting. I looked at my phone. Yeah, uh, Harley Audio Comparison. Is it got dashes in it or anything? No, straight all one word. Okay, so lawbitingbiker dot com forward slash. Harley audio comparison. And of course you can word. always go to the website and just type in auto audio comparison in the upper right hand corner of the search bar, but that'll take you to that blog or just search our YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of people don't know that right on the YouTube channel, there's a search ability and you can search for stereos, Harley audio systems. You'll come up with all the videos, but it kind of explains it, but we're going to break it down. Um, and I give my opinions on that video about our knowledge and maybe what you're looking at, but the four systems to set it up are hog tunes, Cycle Sounds, Harley Davidson, Stage 2, and uh, the J&M Rocker Extreme are the ones that we're going to do, and we are going to do, that's right, let's get ready to rumble! There you go, guys. It's going to definitely. Oh, I had two going. Did you hear that? I uh, thought that was interesting. Was that yeah, two songs at once? Yeah, that was. Yeah. I thought you were doing the remix. That's what I oh. thought. I thought me had the, the club mix. Well, this is, this, is the, this is the mix. So this was right. But then I had Eye of the Tiger playing in the background, dude. <laughs> so who would have guessed that? So this is the actual mix. But somehow I had... I had this playing on top Ooh. of it. That's a new mix, dude. I should be a dude. DJ, dude. dude. I'm telling you, when I hear or did this. did that suck? A mashup? I, it no, was no, a little no. confusing, but. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you hear <laughs> Eye of the Tiger, you're, it's just like Chariots of Fire. You feel like going and running on the beach. Oh, yeah. Eye of the Tiger, you're like, oh, my Lord. It's gone. Give a description of it, Rick, while it's playing. Say, right, right give now. people a visual. Right now, I'm envisioning myself. I'm stretching. I see the rings, and Don't then up. I'm just punching the air right now as hard as I can. Just stretching out. I'm just like, I'm warming up. I'm you don't want to pull a hammy. Good thing you're stretching because you could pull a muscle. And then uh, then when it hits, rising up back on the street. You're just you're just imagining elbowing somebody right there in the side of the face. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's a good visual. I can feel it. I feel like fighting you right now. Let's do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then everybody's going to be like, yeah, we, 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 you should have charged for this. A live you know, lab free fight. Lab. Yeah, no shit. Um, thanks for everybody that's, that's live there. See a lot of people join. And so that's what we're going to break down guys. It is a, a showdown and uh, we're going to be fair to all the systems. We're going to give you the pluses, the minuses, and, uh, and then we're going to break down everything, the different install points, um, 
cost comparison is a lot of it. Do you remember the cost comparison? It's on that YouTube video. Do you kind of have that in your mind? Yeah, I kind of do. Okay. Yeah, we should have. Do you remember how much the uh, Hog Tunes was? Uh, was I it could four fifty four four ninety nine or four fifty yeah four fifty like five hundred uh, price six fifty nine. Eight fifty and nine fifty. Right there, you go. Yeah, four fifty, six fifty, eight fifty, and nine fifty. Okay, all right. We're just talking out loud because that's what we do here, right? We yeah. got microphones in front of us. So talking out our ass. I'm talking out our ass. Um, so these are the four systems, and uh, we'll talk about which bikes we put them on, and uh, let's break it down. So, do you get anybody want to start this? And you want me to start with hog tunes? Why don't you well, start with the hog tunes? Because that was the first one we did. Well, let's start with to any haters out there. These are the four most requested mm. that we had in over 50 emails. So no, we're not ignoring other systems out there. We've dealt with this in the chat rooms and, and on the YouTube. We would love to try every single system we can get our hands on. Tell them about please, the one that we, we, that's not on this list that all of a sudden, and tell them, we, we think that there's people at the company that are getting on our, on our, I sh- I on think our you're chat right. page and they're trying to get, because hey, go ahead, Rick, tell I, the I story. Can't, I can't blame them, but tell I mean, the story. here's the deal. I mean, when we first started this project, hey Cindy Kane's on here, dude. Ooh. She is. Yeah. Hey, what's up, girl? I'm gonna hey, girl. Welcome her. Play my theme song for her. Play my theme song for her. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Go. Play my theme song for Cindy Kane. Well, excuse me. Take a few minutes to mellow out. Big Daddy she Kane loves this old the school. There you go. All right. Explain the story, dude. Okay. So here's the gig. We turned around and. Us three started roundhousing this thing, and, we, and we, it was like at 10 o'clock at night, long, long ass meeting, and we said, what do we want to do? Everybody was asking, hey, I'm looking at doing the hog tunes. Hey, what's this cycle sounds? I hear they're cool because they're do, using this magic box. It's all over the forums. Everybody wanted J&M, and of course, the number one requested, obviously, because you got a lot of newbies getting into Harley-Davidson's and stuff, was the uh, Harley-Davidson stage one and two. And so, very simply, we went... We had over 50 emails. I'm going to say it was closer, about 56 that I counted. That's not even including what you guys got for the year before I was even a moderator in the email. And this is what they were asking for. So we turn around and we make the connections. We do what we got to do. We do these videos. We put it out. And and we're not even saying these are the four best. We're just saying these are the four that we're comparing. Okay. We're not saying these are the four best. We're just saying these are the four we compared. This is where we rate them. This is where we're at. And then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork, everybody's like, how could you not include this? How could you not include Bikertronics that? Bikertronics. Well, Bikertronics right? was the one, but there was, a, another cu- there was another couple of off ones that came up. But Bikertronics, and the first email was like- Never heard of them. You know, how could you Me not neither. include Bikertronics in, their, in your backyard in Boise or something like that? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, we'll have them get a hold of us because, you know, yeah, they're in the, J- they're in the new JMP catalog. They but are. We, See, I didn't know. They, I never heard well, they of them. Honestly, are, I'm not dogging them. But just, a lot of the systems that are in these company catalogs are 13 and older stuff. Mm. And then they're incorporating like JVC Bluetooth systems and stuff. And I said, hey, have them get a hold of us. We're, we're not, you know, well, they're, they're far better. So I just want to lay to rest. We're not saying that there isn't something out there that maybe works better or whatever because we don't know. We haven't tested. Understand, people, these are what people requested. People were wanting to know about hog tunes, obviously. I mean, the price break. They wanted to know about Cycle Sounds because Cycle Sounds is doing more of an automo- automobile type system, which uh, we'll talk mm-hmm. about because I I basically learned how to fine tune that amplifier and I, I'm I'm happy with the system. And then obviously J and M is 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 its own category and stuff, and Harley is is exclusive to them. But so please understand anybody listening to this because I I you, obviously it took less than three hours of our YouTube video being on. And we got hit with about like seven different things from Bikertronics. Bikertronics, we'd love to have one of your systems. We'll install it and we'll test the shit out of it. And you'll get a fair and impartial. And if it's good, we'll let people know about it. But we, did, we didn't have nobody request Bikertronics out of all those. And I'd say probably outside of my 56 that I read, I'm going to guess you guys probably had closer to about another anywhere from 30 to 50 emails over the year and a half prior to that. I mean, people were going crazy wanting to know about these systems. So we'll help you. You just got to get a hold of us and we'll test it. And it's bike tronics. Mm, and sorry. They're yeah. in Moscow, Idaho, which, you know, just down the road from us. I That's didn't about even know. three and a half hours away, four hours. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of them, but so the guy who formed it and created it is uh Mike Meehan. So Mike, if you want us to test one of your systems, 
Send it on over, brother. We'll. Add you can it just too. get a hold of us directly. You don't have yeah. to. We, it just seems like they got guys. Uh, they were we were getting kind of spammy for a little while on our YouTube channel, and then all of a sudden on our website, which is cool. We answered some of the comments, but we kind of figured it might be someone from the company. So we're like, if you want to send us your system, just send it. We just started. You don't have to. You know. Um, yeah, send us your system. We'll yeah. do an install. We'll film it, and we'll give a fair and impartial, like it's, Rick said. Well, we, it's just I, like the Bluetooth stuff. I mean. Out of, we, we put out a video about how the Bluetooth does not direct uh, interface with the Boom 6.5 GT. And all these people want to argue with us. No, that's a hack. It's a hack. Well, I was impressed. AKE, the, the company out of Germany, contacted us directly and said, we want to send you an entire system and test it. And we wouldn't even mind having you as a dealer. Okay, get a hold of it. Send me a system. Let's, yep. let's do this. We're, we're not against... Where, you know, everybody took, some people took that video as we're against Bluetooth. Right. Absolutely not. We're not saying that. You're just going to spend the money for it. You know, right now, the only direct interface is, you know, headsets. And mm -hmm. that's why we offer a headset. But I'll tell you what, people. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's something you want, and you can give us suggestions and we'll go for it. But the companies, they got to come to us. I mean, I mean, we're, you know, we can, we can afford to buy whatever we want. Right. But when we don't even know, when our customers aren't even asking for a system, we can't just go out on a limb and say, we're going to test the system that nobody's asking us to test. So right. now, right. now there are a few people. I think we've had five people ask us to test it. So send us over one. Right. Yeah, exactly. Very well said. Very well said. Um, yeah, we, and we have, you know, we test products that companies send us. We don't mind doing that. We do buy stuff too sometimes, but we're kind of so busy right now. We, that uh, some of the companies are just sending us some stuff or getting a hold of us, and that's cool, and we'll work it in. So, uh, yeah, we would love to do that. Yes, Lurch? Well, I was just looking at this Biketronics uh, as we're talking about it, and their prices are anywhere from 500 for the pre-2014 bikes to seven 800 for the, the, the post-2014, so they're kind of in that price range. So Kind of in that cycle yeah. sounds, J&M, mm -hmm. Harley's system. Yeah, and the send, people send that us one, Mike. Yeah, the people that were commenting, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny because they're like, really, the J&M or the Cycle Sounds, all they are is using this company's amp and this and that. Hey, it don't matter. You know what? They, they, we got a system. We test it. That's what people wanted. That's so how all yours companies and, work. They're yeah. all getting them made at the same time. So factories. here's the deal. Send us a deal. We'll test the shit out of it. Yep, exactly. All right. So with that said. Back uh, on track. Man, no, that, and that's a that, good track, though. Th that happens to us, doesn't it? Sometimes we go off the... And Can't, somebody um, just sent yeah. us an email and loves it that we yeah. do that. Good. Um, I have it in the, if we get to it, it's an email thanking us for, he goes, get off tune. I love it when you guys go on your tangent. That's what makes your podcast is you guys, uh, he says something like, you know, you, you don't always, uh, you know, you go off on your tangent, even if it's talking about some of our things that piss us off uh -huh. kind of stuff. Yeah. If, you know, people find that kind of fun. So. But yeah. you, sir, I need think, to stay out of politics. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. I think some of these other companies we haven't heard of just don't have... It's a them. Trump nation. Just <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Matt. They just don't have the media presence and the, the, the internet presence. And Because when you look for motorcycle systems, the ones that we've tested are the most some of the most popular and the ones that come up. Right. And they're in the magazines. They're on... The, you know, the first few pages of Google. So, the, you know, they're the most popular, the ones that people have been asking about. That are most available. Yeah. You know, in stores and things mm -hmm. like that. Certainly doesn't mean they're the best, but they are, like Lurch, that was well said. Yeah. Uh, easiest to get your hands on and the most in your face kind of, you know, whether that's advertising or what. So here's Hog Tunes. Um, and we have a video on each one of these guys. Um, let me fix this real quick. All right. So the link to get the Hogtunes video install video, guys. It is one of our premium videos. It's at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Hogtunes. Nothing but 100% positive feedback and everybody that's got that video. I did a really, I did that video by myself and spent a ton of time, very, very detailed as all our videos are. Um, so Hogtunes, for a price point, we're specifically, guys, we're talking about front amp mostly. Although our videos will get into that, they'll work for the rear um, even though we may or may not have done that in the video. Um, the hog tunes is, is uh, uh, all the videos I'll say is, is specifically, mostly we're talking about the front amp and speakers. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, so that's what we got with the hog tune system. And you're looking at a price point of about $450. Now I had the hog tunes on my bike. And the only reason I took the hog tunes off is because I had to take it off to do test another system install. Really guys, that's what we're doing around here. We, uh, we put our bikes 
Um, we sacrifice our bikes and put them on the altar for you guys. We bleed our bikes on the altar for you guys to uh, put them under surgery and and put multiple systems on them um, just because we need to film the videos, guys, and we just don't have access to bikes everywhere. We're using, you know, uh, lab crews, bikes and friends, uh, people in the club and friends of the club and things like that. So, all right. So hog tunes, I'll say as far as the install, first of all, hog tunes is our lowest price point. Um, I will tell you that. So price means a lot. And we understand that guys. Um, I couldn't just go out and buy a J and M system, you know, right away. Um, I had to wait for that. Um, I know, uh, Lurch had to save up and for the, for the Hardy Davidson stage two um, speakers and amps, you know, we're definitely understand family budgets. And so that's why we bring price point into the conversation is everybody's at a different financial level. Everybody, you know, some people can afford it. No problem. And they just want to pay for the best sound. And then there's other people that are like, I want better sound, but I don't have an endless family budget. So we are very understanding of that. And that's why hog tunes comes in um, as your lowest end system, as far as pricing goes. Now, the Hogtoons install is once you get the video, I'll tell you all, and you guys can jump in on this, but all the installs can be, we've done so many of them now, it's become second nature to us because there's a lot of similarities, but they all, all are different and unique, but there's enough similarities that we can figure it out pretty much without the instructions, but that did not happen on the first install. And I'll tell you, I waded through the hog tune stuff. And once I figured it all out, of course, then we put it into a video that is super, super intuitive and easy for you guys to understand. It's just so easy to show the plugs that you need to plug and where they go and why they do what they do. Cause the instructions don't tell you any of that. So hog tunes install, once you get the video, very, very doable guys getting up in your front fairing there. And uh, for the most part, there actually for the all part, there is no soldering um, included in that system. It's technically, and when we say plug and play, means there's no soldering. Um, but it's not as easy as just plug and play because you really need to know where things are going and what they're doing. So price point of four fifty um, install, uh, pretty up there as far as ease goes. Once you get the video, you won't have a problem. Um, and then sound. This is what I found on the Hog Tunes. And again, I'm not talking about about hog tunes. It's a wonderful system. I'm just we're we're fair fair and impartial here to these systems. Hog tunes is definitely going to increase the sound on your motorcycle. Um, you're going to get way better sound than you would out of the stock boombox uh, system with those stock speakers. Uh, quite a bit. It can be heard at freeway speeds, no problem. It's much much louder, obviously, than the stock one. Um, what else can I say about it? Uh, I, one of the drawbacks, I guess, to hog tunes, uh, is turn it up about with the amp, with the amp dialed in, um, you can turn it up about halfway. Now it cranks at halfway, but if you're going to go any beyond halfway, you start getting, um, distortion. But again, that halfway is way, way louder than the stock system. So you're still getting a ton more sound and there's different ways to judge systems based on decibels where we, maybe Matt will get into that later. So I'm not basing it on decibels or is it proper? Me and Matt were talking about this. Earlier, is it proper to judge a system based on that? You can turn it up all the way and it doesn't distort at all. Cause we're going to break some of that down. I don't know. I don't know what the fairest way is. I'm just telling you that hog tunes, you're only going to be able to turn your system up a little over halfway and past that, it's going to sound like crap. It's going to distort. But for 450, you're getting an ass load more sound than you're getting from stock. And the install's easy. The price point's right. Interestingly enough, with hog tunes, I found we also tested it by taking the amp out. And so we removed the fairing mounted amp. And we said, let's just test it with just coming out of the boom box with just the hog tune speakers. And I will tell you, that it sounded just as good without the amp, just running off the boom box, but you could turn it all the way up with no distortion. The thing I didn't get without the amp was the bass hit. 
So even though I could turn it up all the way without the amp and get great clean sound all the way up, I, I lost some bass hit by removing that amp. So there's two ways you could get the hog tunes just with the speakers. And that's only probably 150 bucks. And you're going to get, if you don't have any money and you're just like, I just want a little better sound, get the hog tune speakers, hook them directly up to your boom box. Our video will show you how to do that minus the amp. No problem. And you'll get some great clean sound that is, that you're, you'll be happy with. Um, it's not going to sound as clean as the higher end systems, but it's not going to sound like garbage either. Okay. Was that fair? Yeah. The, you guys have any questions? Because I did the hog tune system alone without you guys. You did just, but I, 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 did I hear it? I can't remember if I heard it with the amp on or not, but I don't I, think you did. I don't think I did, but it sounds like the amp was too hot and it was just overpowering the speakers. And Rick and I were talking about this earlier downstairs when he was, uh, uh let me listen to his cycle sounds, which sounds awesome by the way. And he'll get to that. Um, but those six and a half inch speakers, they're not bass speakers. They're mid range speakers. So in a car system where you've got, tweeters for the highs, you know, six and a half for the mids. I mean, the mids are like a kick drum, their voice mostly. And then you have a subwoofer that really, you know, has the, the bass. And then you adjust all those speakers accordingly. So on your tweeter, you cut out all the mid range and the lower range on your uh, door speakers. You cut out. Uh, You're talking about amp adjustment. Yeah. I'm just okay. talking about speakers in general. Okay. You know, so on your door speakers, you cut out a lot of the bass and you just let a little bit through and you cut out some of the high end. And then your subwoofers, you cut all, all the mid range and high end. So you separate these, these tones out, these decibels out. And that's why it sounds good as a whole. This is a motorcycle sp- speaker it's a six and a half inch speaker you're going down the road at 70 80 miles an hour it's not gonna pound bass so you have to adjust things accordingly and the problem is is i think they just had too much going to those speakers and they didn't have the right hog tunes yeah yeah they didn't have the right adjustments and 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 crossovers and whatnot does that make sense rick yeah on your hog tunes amp did you have high and low pass filters and and ability to adjust gain and frequencies and stuff Okay. No, not that I, not, there was some minor adjustments, but not like cycle sounds. Yeah. Cause I so, dealt with your cycle sounds yeah, with you. Yeah. And, and J and M has a quite a bit of adjustments too. It came pre-adjusted. We didn't have to yes. touch it. Uh, but those, the, and we'll get into that, but the cycle sounds in the J and M have a lot more adjustments. Whereas I don't think the hog tunes had much, a little bit and the boom has none. You can't adjust the boom at all. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking up hog tunes right now. So when you took that amp out and stopped running all that power to those speakers, it wasn't overdriving the speakers. And yeah, you lost some of the punch, but it, it wasn't distorting and it ended up sounding better in the long run. Yeah. And one of the things that I've heard about um, hog tunes is I've heard a lot of praise about their 13 and older uh, model systems. I've, I've read all over the internet and I've had friends that have have them. They're like, oh yeah, for the money, this is absolutely fantastic in my 2012 ultra limited and stuff. So, you know, when the boom system came out and the way that Harley Davidson is doing the software and adjusting that 6.5 GT radio, you got to understand, and there's some conversation that I'll talk about with the cycle sounds here that you know, what they really want to do, Harley wants to do is make it so that these aftermarket companies cannot hook into their system and it's not going to sound good. So you have to buy their product. I mean, they want it to be proprietary. Right. And so some of these companies are having to literally, I don't know if hog tunes, when you had your system, whether they were at that level yet where they were now, you know, my system does it through a inline diffuser um, or line level mm-hmm. magic box. And we'll get to but, that. Definitely. But yours um, didn't have that. And so they unfortunately may have been applying something that would have worked great with a 13 and older into your brand new 14. Cause you put it in at that time. Yeah. But if that, uh, set up the hog tune setup had the magic box, uh, it probably would have been a little bit better. Yeah. Cause it's very easily yeah. explained. You've got the amp pushing out, you know, mm-hmm. so many Watts per channel. Okay. So if it's 20, 50, whatever it is, whatever's coming out of your deck, you're trying to dumb down the signal. Yeah, yeah. And so what the Harley does is all the all the power is coming out of the deck and powering your two or four speakers that you have. Now, when you turn around and add an amplifier, the reason why the Harley Davidson system has the download is because when you buy the stage one or stage two and you have to go and get the download, the reason that is because they shut off the power from the deck because right. all the powers come from the amplifier. Well, on these aftermarket systems, they're having to bypass that original wattage per channel 
and so that, that they dumb it down so that the, the pure sound is coming out of the amp. That's the basics of it. I mean, so that you guys understand. We'll, we'll go into it a little bit more. But some people are like J and M appears as though they're actually doing it inside their amp and they're pre doing it. Uh, Cycle Sounds is using an inline uh, magic box, a, a signal diffuser, and Hog Tunes. When you installed yours, they did not have that, and I'm thinking that's why it seemed overpowered at the time. Right, and, and it looks like they do have one now. So I'm looking at well, I'm looking at the pictures of the Hog Tunes amp online. Oh, I'm sorry, and it looks like all you can adjust is gain. It's got an amp. See, level. that's what I was looking at. So you can go plus three dB, zero or minus. Yeah, 3 and I dB. remember adjusting these. I could never get it adjusted to where it didn't do what I just said. Right. So whatever was on there at the time I did it, I played with all that and I couldn't dial yeah. it in. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that gain means more volume, and that's not what it is. Sometimes you're just like the cycle sound system says. Most people will be just fine at three quarter to a half gain. I actually have mine at a quarter. Because of the music I listen to, I'm not worried about volume. I'm worried about clarity. I'm. I want to hear when I listen to music. I want to hear the highs. Right, Whitney the Houston. Mm -hmm. I want to. No, we and were listening. We were listening to. We were listening to Anthrax's new album down there. It's the best heavy metal album in the last twenty years. And you ask you ask him, and he'll talk about when I talk about. Mine is set up for kick drum. Right. It it hits the kick drum hard. But it's not going to hit the bass hard. It's a 6.5 speaker. I mean, for God's sakes. Yeah, you adjusted yours well. So you got that really low end bass out of there. So you don't get the distortion. Yeah, I've, I've you got a nice clean bass hit. Yeah. And we'll talk about adjusting the cycle sounds when you're ready. Mm -hmm. No, that's good stuff. What else do you have to add about the hog tunes there? You're the one that put it in and you're the one that uh, dealt with it mostly. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Okay. Um, I think that's a fair review of it and uh, great like I said, if you want to get into a system and just get better sound, then either do the speakers and the amp. And and uh, I agree with you. I think they just didn't have the signal dumbed down. And you didn't have to get the boom box flashed, which we're going to talk about. The only one you got to get it flashed now is the, uh, the Hardy-Davidson Stage 2. The rest of these systems are all figuring it out, like Rick alluded to, is that you'd, they're, they're uh, somehow afterwards dumbing down the signal. And Hogtunes just simply didn't do that with anything. Yeah, and I and think can, that's why you say, Rick, I think you're very accurate when you say Yeah, and the say conspiracy that. theory in this, uh, with the stereo manufacturers and the techs that I've spoken to is that's what Harley's going for. They eventually want to get it to where you cannot dumb down the signal. So anything you try to put on is is not going to sound as good. I mean, they, they obviously want their systems in their bikes. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a very good point, Rick, is yeah, they... Uh, it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here because these systems are figuring out J and M cycle sounds are figuring out how to get a wet round it. So you don't have to flash it and it'll be curious to see what Harley Davidson does with that over time. It scares me to every time there's an update, you know, yes. and I had one tech that is very bright and he told me, you know, you never know when that next update comes and all of a sudden your system sounds like junk because they found some way to work around to where you, you can't, uh, get rid of that extra 25, 30 watts per channel. Right. This is what you have your amp <laughs> dialed in for. No, it's not. Hear this that. Is, this is what you're this, this is, this is, this is so it? stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just see you riding on, I will, your, I will, <laughs> on, your, on your couch. Dude. I will tell you though, in this video with that long blonde hair, yeah. she was like, do delicious. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Taking it back. Even if she was dead in a in a bathtub, I might. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Good lord! And oh you just man! Took it too you guys far. need to keep it serious, please. Uh, Wrong. You guys are way too have a much fun, <laughs> sirs. You sir. You sir. All right, so let's just dive into cycle sounds. We put the hog tunes. I'll tell you on my bike, and like I said, I now have a J and M J and M system. That's <clears throat> he went back to puberty right there. Wow. <clears throat> Um, that's only because I had to put the J and M on, but uh, we're going to put the hog tunes on uh, uh, Jakey's bike. Oh, good. Uh, he just needs to get over here. We're going to, we'll film that. Um, put the speakers in. Yeah, we're going to put the speakers in. I don't know if he wants to do the amp or not. Probably we'll not. Find out. But all right, cycle sounds shoot from the hip. Ooh, Rick. cycle sounds. So um, one of the most talked about in the blogs at that time was talking about this company called cycle sounds. And so I started doing some research and I actually called them. One of the reasons why I chose them for my bike um, was the price. I was able to get into it for about 800 bucks or less. And they gave me a little bit of a discount on that. 
um, because I was doing a four speaker system for an ultra. They had actually seen a lot more um, sales associated with the street glide and stuff like that. And the road glide, the two speaker systems. And he said, yeah, I'd like to, we'll send it out there and like to see your video and see what goes on. I specifically chose cycle sounds because it was more like an automobile system than any of the other ones. Um, anybody who's had experience doing, um, uh, amp and speaker installs on cars understands that you're going to have an amp. Typically you're going to have, um, either full range, uh, low or high pass. You're gonna have a gain and a frequency adjustment. And it's safe to say that this amp is, the amplifier is probably could go right into a car. Uh, it's just set up that way. And that's what I was familiar with. What I was not familiar with, of course, was it took me several times to fine tune it to where I could get it to be the the kick drums sharp, the highs and the mids um, tight. Um, And that just took me playing around with it. So I will say this before I go any further. Cycle Sounds is your system if you are a tinkerer. If you like to tinker and you have no problems, if you've installed car stereo systems, you will have no problem with this. It is very much like a car stereo system. You tie into the power, the ground, um, you'll actually run separate in the front speaker. Um, they have a very easy to use um, um, adapter that takes from the stock um, connections um, and it interloops into that. And then um, for the rear speakers, which most people probably will never do, but we did rear speakers because I have an ultra limited. Um, instead of using the stock wiring, we actually use their kit and we run a whole new set of speaker wires to the back to the um, trunk pods. And the reason why they do that is um, so that you can maintain your fader and your balance and everything back there. If you're putting it on an ultra with, yeah, on an ultra with passenger speakers. Yeah. I mean, now I know that if I ever buy another bike, what I'm going to do is buy a road glide or street glide and just have the two speakers in the front because my, my, I never even hear my speed. I bought an ultra cause it had a trunk and I, and, and the touring I do, but in reality, I mean, I, I ever did again, I'd get a street glide or a road glide and I would just add a trunk on the back without the speakers. Cause you can't even hear them and they're really passenger deals. But the other thing that was nice about cycle sounds is they had the same ideas as far as adding amps. You could do jumpers off in the saddlebags. They sell saddlebag lids. They sell saddlebags, six by nine speakers, but their theory, when I was talking to them about um, your experience with hog tunes, is they said, um, "Listen, here's the deal. Harley Davidson really." Sorry, re- I'm making. I'm not trying to. Inter- we're not laughing at you. I'm making comments that Cindy wants a woofer in the trunk. She rides on the back of Big Daddy's bike. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, she she listens to that old school hip hop shit. So they. Uh, sorry to interrupt like you, dude. That. I didn't want you to think we're laughing at what you're saying. No, we're no, actually, no. Yeah. no commenting. Uh, I wasn't, I, I can only see half your face. Through right. the, anyways. the, um, the system with this is that they have the full capability. You can run the full thing out. But, um, so here's the install process. You're going to take the front fairing off. You're going to set up your amplifier. The front speaker stuff is very simple. You're, you're basically just taking off your speaker pods in the front, the little, our videos got you covered on all yeah. this guys, law biker.com forward slash cycle sounds. Yeah, and, and really all you are doing if you're doing front speakers is you're doing the adapter from the stock. You're not cutting any wires on those speakers. You're just literally plugging it in um, to the stock, uh, male to female type stuff. But instead of um, what you're going to do is the other end is bare. It's bare wire, and you're just plugging it into the amp. And for the front deal, I would say if, if you've ever installed a car stereo, it's super simple. You're running a power, a ground, and the two speakers. Then from there, you're going to tinker with it a little bit. And they do give you some basic directions in there as far as gain. They don't don't really talk much about the frequency. They talk about low pass, high pass, full sound and stuff. But when we looked at the directions, it said most people run half to three-quarter gain. And the first thing they te- they remind you is gain is not volume. Everybody think people who are unfamiliar with amps think gain means volume. Well, it kind of does because when you're running it a certain and you adjust the gain up, it sounds louder. But like on these microphones, but you can go too far with the game where it's picking up all the backup noise yeah. on a mic and, to, and to distortion somehow and such. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And distortion. Exactly. That's what you get with a mic when you turn the game yeah. too high too. And yeah. so when we first installed this, we were sitting at like three quarter gain. And by the time I got home, I put it to half and, uh, I had to experiment a little bit with the high and low pass and the full sound stuff. And I was telling Matt earlier, 
you know, if, if I had like this big trunk that I could put eight inch and another amp back there, I could set up my front speakers for high end only, no bass whatsoever, just from the amp, no bass blockers, nothing. It's already in the amp. And then you could turn around in the back and have these two eight inch woofers that were all low pass. And you could, you could really do some cool stuff with it just mm-hmm. like a car. Um, but the, uh, the installation really wasn't that bad. Now, going to the back speakers, it took a little bit more for us. Because yeah, but let's talk about... I'm not trying to interrupt you. I just want to... Because I, I... But he's going to. But I'm going to. No, <laughs> I already did. Please do. Um, Rick is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to these systems. And, and he's had a lot of... And Matt, too. Lurch here have had a lot... I did a lot of car stuff in the past, but not like these guys. And so, here's what I'll mention. Because I was involved with Cycle Sounds. Talk about... We don't have to get in detail. It, it's, for the most part, it's plug and play. Um, with our video, it's going to make it super simple and dumb it down for you. The one thing about the cycle sounds, I think that that is different from the rest is there is some splicing and yeah. there are extra components. Try to break it down as easy as you can. The magic boxes. And those are a, a different thing than any of the other systems we did. The magic boxes diffuse the signal into the amp and then talk about the minor splicing just on the front and then we'll get to the rear. Can you do that? Yeah. So here's how the system works. You have, um, you obviously have your already your wattage coming out of your deck. So coming out of the deck, you basically are going to dumb down the signal so that you don't overpower when you're adding stock deck power and then you're adding an amplifier on top of it. It's, it's going to overpower the speaker. So what they're doing is using the magic box, the inline diffuser. They have three different models. One's a universal, one's for the front, and then I think there's one more for the rear, but we went with the universal. And that's the their method. That's their method. J&M that's, in a minute we're getting into it is doing that somehow in the amp. It, they're right. actually doing it externally in the inline diffuser, right? Without right. getting any more in that. Yeah. Go ahead. The magic box drops that signal down to what they call line in level. So it takes it from the 25 watts or whatever it is. 25 watts per channel. To a line in level. And the J&M amp has, it's set up to accept, it it does it inside is what I'm saying. Right. Cycle Sound's doing it externally with these boxes. Their J&M's doing it internally. Right. Harley's doing it by just reprogramming the boom box. Right. Okay. I just could try. It can get confusing, but hopefully Mm -hmm. that for the audience helps. Go ahead. Line level in. Line level in. That's what what it's doing. It's taking it down to a line level in. Right. So it's it's in between the amp and the boom box, just dumbing the signal down. Yeah. For lack of better term. Yeah. So line level. I like that term. Yeah. And and so that's that's basically it. You're taking the signal out of the deck into the magic box, dumbing it down. And then turn around and putting that signal back into the amp. And with the front speakers, um, it actually went in via um, RCA connector. So it was very plug and play. And then out of the amp, you now have your two or four, depending on how many speakers you're doing, outputs. The difference with that is, is that you now have this adapter that's coming out of your stock stereo, your male to female, where it used to just plug into the Boom Audio 6.5 GT. Now it's going into this adapter, and instead of going into the radio, it's now going to the uh, input and then eventually output of the um, the amplifier. Right. So it's very much like a car. It's it's You have a signal from the deck going into the amp, and then you have the output from the amplifier going out to your speakers. And in between that uh, signal from the deck to the amp is where the magic box is. Magic box is two of them. Yeah. There, there's one. Left the, and right. Yeah. Right. There's, there's, and that's how they do it. And, but. It, and but you got to splice those. Yeah. You, you, and so that's you one of the things about those. the cycle sounds. You got to splice. Yeah. It's very. I'm not mo- talking bad about it, but we need to, you know, we're giving pluses and minuses of each yeah. system. That's the minus on this one. That's why I said, if you were familiar with, with right. car stereos, you'll have no issues with this because it'll be nothing familiar. Or if with you, our video, you won't have any yeah, issues. Yeah, with our video, you so won't have simple. any issues either because they actually provide you these really cool yes, um, they um, do. splice. Attack. It's not as though you're, you're not soldering. Yeah, you're not crimping. Or, or you're not doing like old school where you clip, you know, you you strip off each end and you tie them together and put electric tape Red around it like you did back in high school when you bought a new deck. You're right. I mean, they give you everything that you need. Um, but the speakers... Are six point five. I the one thing that I noticed and is uh, 
in the bike, I had the stock speakers. When I put in the Cycle Sound 6.5 upgrade speakers, immediately I noticed how much lighter they were. Um, the material, the um, it, the material as far as the woofer or the compound of the woofer was very similar to the Harley Davidson Stage One and Stage Two. Um, but I will tell you, their their speakers were really light, and uh, they, it, it was kind of kind of cool to see how the weight difference of the stock speaker with this heavy magnet and their magnet wasn't needed to be um, so heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're just doing the front, you won't have any issues with our video. It'll be very clean. The tinkering part that I'm talking about, though. But we even run to the back. Yeah. We even run the harness to the back, so our video is going to cover you for both. Yeah, yeah. We we run the... You can buy this, You can buy our video and get the cycle sounds if you want to save some money, obviously, from the Harley system or the J&M Rocker Extreme. You can buy it for a two or a four speaker system because we did the entire thing versus the other ones that we typically put them in a two speaker. This is the we one. We showed you how to run the rear harness because from there, it's plug and play, so it, there's just... It gets you ninety five percent of the way there, the other ones, but the cycle sounds get you hundred percent of the way there. Yeah, it's 100%. for the rear, for the rear. Yeah, if yeah. you're just doing front amp and speaker, then all our videos get you all the way there. But you know, the rear is just that extra harness. We have the tank off anyways. You're just running an extra harness, and then you're just plugging into speaker. So our videos are good for all that, guys. Yeah, and and what you'll find is um, they will give you some basic adjustments to start at. And that was where they said most people can do three qu- three quarter volume, and they they like having the gain at a half to three quarter. When I started fine tuning mine, um, I actually had my ga- I have my gain at twenty five percent now, and I have my frequency the fr- the the frequency both front and rear. That's the thing I like about my system is that I have complete control over everything. I have a front and rear adjustment, uh, not only on frequency um, up to one twenty. Um, there, but the 40 to 120, but I also have complete uh, on high pass, low pass, full sound, and I also have the gain on each. So depending on what you're doing, if but, you're if you're yeah. building a serious system and you're going to do saddlebags where you're going to have 6.9s and now the saddlebag is working as your base enclosure so you can actually get some good base, this isn't a bad system because, uh, it, you know, of course, I'm limited because I'm going to a six point, like Lurch says, I'm doing a 6.5 speaker pod in the back. Of course, that trunk provides for a lot of bass. Mm-hmm. That, that, the new basing, that new trunk enclosure on the 14s and newer um, Ultras, that's very good bass back there. But yeah. just imagine if you were doing a jump off to some saddlebag speakers and you got 6.9s now, you could literally with my system, and if I do, I may do that, maybe we'll do this sometime just to, just for giggles, but this now allows me to adjust. I could literally, like I was telling him, I can put high pass on my two front speakers so nothing coming out of it is but mid and trebles. Mm-hmm, right. And then on my 6.9s, I can have those set up for full sound. And then I, and then I can have the bass wherever I want. Um, Good point. It, it gives you that flexibility. Um, the Harley Davidson doesn't give you any flexibility. You get what, the, what their program download is. The j and I can't speak to. Um, but, same it's pre-adjusted but i will tell you with this it's just like a car so if i decided if i in my ultra i can't put um i can't put speakers down in the because i got a radiator down there mm-hmm. but if i had um a, a street glide and i wanted to put lowers and guess what cycle sound sells the speakers and so i could literally run four speakers there and you and you can run different gains or whatever you want so i do like that about it um the uh, running the rear speaker was a little bit of a pain when you're doing it. Now, it's going to be easy for you guys with the video, but it was a little bit of pain for me and Ryan because we're thinking, hey, this plug-in, they could just go into the stock wiring and it works, but it doesn't, it takes out the, the fader for you. And that's, that was one of the things that we learned is we could have shortcut and we could have went with the stock um, speaker wiring to the trunk. But when we called um, Cycle Sounds, and, and I'll tell you, Bill at Cycle Sounds, his customer service is outstanding. I'm a, I mean, they're, we, they're not paying us for nothing. I'm just giving you a shout out because he was very easy to work with. He mm-hmm. gave me a lot of information. Give us a Dick's discount on the system. We'll yeah. S- yep. And so with him, um, when I told him that, he goes, yeah, it'll work, but you're going to lose your fader capabilities. You got to run our rear sp- speaker harness to keep your fader. And so we went ahead and did that, even though we found a way to get around it. Um, and we were testing it. You got to understand, we weren't, it's not as though we didn't know what we were doing. We were just curious. What happens if we just use this rear speaker harness? And it worked. Right. But, but, it, but you do have to run that speaker. And with that, you had to, of course, 
uh, put it into the pod. You had to do a little bit more stripping and crimping to it. It's like putting in a full stereo system uh, in a car. You know, we had to uh, plug it in that way, but um, it took me probably about three times of playing with it and the adjustments. And now I have it really tight. I have mine set up the way I want it. Somebody else. Now you may have my system and you may say, I want more bass. And trust me, my system has bass, but my bass is set up differently. I have my frequency down to a quarter. Mm -hmm. So I'm running about 80 frequency on the front and rear because they're only 6.5s. Before I was running half, um, but I liked my frequency a little bit down, more of a quarter. So the bass wasn't overpowering the 6.5s. Right. Because I told Lurch back in the old days when we had 6.5s in the kick panels, what did we do? We put bass blockers on them. Mm Mm-hmm. We didn't, right. want, we didn't want our door being distorted and right. with the base. We put base blockers on it, and we let our six by nines and our subwoofers do all the base. Right. Crossover. Uh, yeah. On, yeah the, on, right. a, on a bike, right. you can't do this. And, and that's the thing. You've got to be realistic, people. This is a bike with potentially two to six speakers. And other than saddlebag speakers at 6.9, these speakers are not meant to be playing Jay-Z and all this hip-hop stuff. That's not what they're made for. They're made for full sound, a uh, mid-range tweeter, you can handle a little bit of bass. Oh, that's so gay. <laughs> Cindy's rolling. Cindy's rolling right now. She knows I'm about ready to start punching hey. the air. I'm like that angry kid that's like, I'm tired of it. You, you know, when we were working in the garage earlier and we heard that bike pull up, I thought this is what I heard blaring out in the driveway. Oh, this is all, this is all I, I heard. Thought, no, no. Wait, nah, that can't be Rick. It Maybe was it'll... not. It was the Bee Gees. Okay. <laughs> oh, were you staying alive? I wasn't staying alive. I was uh, jive talking. I was jive talking. Nothing wrong with that tune. But I will tell you, um, I've enjoyed this system, but I've got mine tuned to where it, it is not as loud as yours. I guarantee it. And it's probably not as loud as his, but I can tell you, I can turn mine up to three quarter volume and it is a clean hit. It's a clean cut and it sounds good. And I tuned it to three particular songs. Uh, one was a Michael Jackson song. Beat it, which actually is uh, your J and M system came with a little. Nerd, yeah, it's on there. That's nerd. why I thought you guys were on my bike when I heard it down yeah. there. I was like, sweet, they're testing my bike. That's actually a really good song to check yeah. systems I, with. I did that one. Um, I did uh, Anthrax's new album. They have an intro song that comes in the first song on their album. Um, new release that they have has a lot of uh, mid and tweets that kind of kind of mystic and uh, just beat it, Rick. Yeah, I'm I'm beating a dead that, horse here a, talking about cycle sounds, but goofball song, but it a uh, good song to test your system to. And Inner Sandman was another one. Metallica was on there. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I should have brought that yeah. stick up here. And but I'll tell you, I mean, you've I, got it dialed in. There's yeah, no doubt it, about it, it took, but it didn't happen overnight. That's because correct. I had to. I did it here, and when and Ryan and we're like, man, this thing's loud because I had the gain up to like mm, halfway. Yeah. And then I get home and I'm like, man, what? I would say, who the hell is this? Justin, you were listening to Justin Bieber. Oh my God, you're I don't even know ears. who it is. I'm How can I know I'm listening to him? A second. Will you turn this shit off? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, Here, so what I would say, uh, and I didn't um, work on that system, but I'm I'm pretty comfortable with audio systems. It sounds like if you know what you're doing and you've installed some car systems before, you, and you yeah. li- and you want to tweak. And like you said earlier, if you're a tinkerer, this sounds like a good system for you because, man, you've got it dialed in. But if you've never done much with audio systems, it may not it may may not be the best for you. Yeah, and unless you're wanting to learn that. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the Harley system's easy. I mean, yeah. it's funny how these dealers charge you a bunch of money to install this deal. And sometimes, especially the stage two, my dealer, um, I like them, but they had no clue. They didn't realize that that amp now had to convert to two channel. The other thing about the cycle sounds before we get off of it is that with the two speaker system with it, it's going to be even more wattage to it. Cause remember it's the same amp, but I have mine done for four channels. You can convert that amp to a two channel. So for the street glide guy, even though mine, um, my, I'll tell you this much. I had a stage one. I had a Harley Davidson stage one fully installed. Um, I installed it myself. I didn't do it as part of lab. I did it literally. They were in Sturgis and I was getting ready to ride back to Pittsburgh. I emailed him and he said, wait to do this until we record it. And I was like, fuck this. I want this system for the drive. And he, he got all pissed at me. You're not but, allowed to put anything on your bike 
without filming it. Have yeah, we, he got have pissed you not, at me. Have you not learned? We got to Sturgis and learned? I told him. We got to Sturgis of last year. I get pissed. And I told him about it. And he's like, I've been one. I would have I would have paid you to install Failure. this. And I said, listen, I wanted this for the trip. I will tell you, I will never, ever buy a stage one Harley Davidson system ever again. It was a complete waste of 900 bucks by the time I bought the amp and the four speakers for my Ultra. I will tell you, I spent less money on this cycle sounds. It sounds cleaner. It sounds better. But I had to tinker about two or three times. But now I've got it dialed in. But mine's not for rap or bass. It's for kick drums. I want to feel that drum. But with the two speaker system, you bridge that thing. It's no longer you just put it to a two channel system. You're gonna. It's gonna be louder. Sure, you're gonna run more power that way. Yeah, you're right. gonna be running two. But uh, since I'm running four, the problem with that, of course, is is that when we're sitting out in the garage, we hear all four speakers, and we're like, "Man, this sounds good." It sounds. When you're going down the road, though, you're just hearing the front. Too. You don't hear the two speaker. I don't care if right. you're wearing a half helmet or not. And for those of you that say, "Oh, you're full of crap," I hear my back speakers all the time. If you're doing 70 to 80 miles per hour, no. you may hear a little bit of echo, but the only time you really hear those speakers is when you're standing still and you can hear those two or slow in the slowing trunk. town. Yeah. Same with lid when, speakers. When I'm turning they're around and going down the, when I'm turning around going down the road, for show. they're playing, you know what those speakers are for? They're, they're for the passenger. That's mm, what, that's what right. they're for. So I, my front two speakers are what I'm listening to on a daily basis or hopefully a daily basis if I'm writing. <laughs> Is this what you listen to daily? You know what LD would say about those back speakers? Those, are, those are the panty dropping speakers. You get your kick drums hitting on this? No, I don't listen to this. But I will tell you. Are you the Pleathman? No. Are you the Pleathman? Pleathopather? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're doing the YMCA. In but here. yeah, if you're oh. doing putting this in a street glide, I, I mean, I'll tell you, man, go for it because. It, it's not that hard to adjust. And the thing is, if you buy the video and if you're listening to this podcast at all, um, I just gave you the, the answers, at least for me, it's, is about, um, quarter, quarter, uh, frequency on full sound. And my gain is a quarter. I've done gain up to a half. I just noticed that at the kind of music I listen to country and, and, uh, um, hard rock. I'm kind of a good little mix with that. YMCA. Mm -hmm. No, ain't no YMCA. Whitney Houston. I would go to the YWCA if there's naked girls though. <laughs> but boy. they, uh, it, it just it's a little bit cleaner this way. So I actually have mine a little bit lower volume than I ever could, but it's clean. All right, sweet. High points. My take real quick on cycle sounds because we want to. That was a lot. Great information. That's why I love having Big Daddy in the studio and Lurch alike. Wealth of knowledge. Cycle sounds. Good price point, six fifty. Not bad. That's not good. bad. You know, two hundred more, still cheaper than J and M, and cheaper than a Harley Stage Two. Uh, uh, magic boxes. You decide. There are extra. There's extra stuff to put up there. We show you how to organize it. Not a huge deal. Splicing. None of the other systems require splicing. I'm not. But please. Just like Hogtons, I'm not talking about about Hogtons. I'm not talking about about Cycle Sounds. Everybody understand. I'm just telling you the pluses and minuses. It could be a plus or it could be a minus for you. That's up to you. You do have to do a little splicing, but it's simple because they give the little really uh, high tech splice connectors. So it's not like the old cut and stripping and crimping. Okay, they provide everything. Uh, a lot of plug and play stuff. The amp is different than all the other systems. So Hog Tunes, the boom box plugs right into the amp. Same with J&M, same with Harley. With that one, you actually have to hook it up. It is very like a car, like we say. And you've got to strip the wires back. And I remember doing this install and you've got to get the screwdriver and you got to twist your wire down and mm -hmm. you got to curve your little wire around the screws. And then you got to screw each channel in for the right, left, rear, front, all that. So it was different as that. I'm not saying that's a down point. I'm just saying it's different than the rest of them. Very, very like a car. I think we've hit that point. Um, so splicing that that goes, and then also the the magic boxes, which everybody else is doing it a different way. It adds a little extra bulk, not a huge deal, um, but just understand it's there. So that would be the pluses. The other the other only thing, and he's hit on it, is probably it takes a lot of adjustment. Um, that's not a bad thing or a good thing. And like he says, it actually has some good points if you were going to even do more where you could really dial things in. But you better have some time to spend hit and gain and, and all that kind of stuff to figure out where you want it. 
Um, but great price point, solid product, sounds awesome. Crank it up three quarters of the way. It, the thing rocks. I, I mean, I was up here setting up the studio and the thing was just nailing where the bonus room above the garage. So great sound and system. Just understand that's how it differs from the other system, but great price point. And uh, I have nothing, uh, I would not tell you not to put a cycle sounds on your bike. I think you would be very happy with it. Well said. Yes. Yeah. And understand that there will be people out here listening to this that are car stereo installers or, or motorcycle stereo installers or even cycle sounds. And they'll be like, you don't have to tinker with it. You just go right to this. This is the settings. Maybe not for we're, me. We're, we're talking, we're, we're doing these videos and we're talking to you as though you've never installed this before. And so for me, I had to tinker with the gain and, and the frequency a little bit to make it hit perfect on those four speakers. So take it for what it is. You, if you're an expert car stereo person, you're, you know all the lingo, you know all the frequencies, you know how much can go into a 6.5. That's not going to be an issue for you. For me, I had to just tinker it a little bit for my sound, for my taste. And Rick already gave you his secret sauce right here on this podcast, lawbindingbacker.com forward slash cycle sounds. The video will make it a breeze should you choose to purchase a cycle sound system. Moving on to Hardy Davidson stage one and two. This video would really let you do both because the stage one is just t- t- re- tell, tell them the difference quickly with between a stage one and a stage two the speakers. Hardy system speakers. That's it. That's right. it. The amplifier hooks up the exact same way. Um, the wiring connection, the jumper harnesses, the the rear to the rear, everything's the same. The only difference is, is the speakers on a stage one, it's going um, one channel per speaker. Mm-hmm. Yes. And when you go to the stage two, you're using two channels per speaker because one's going to the woofer and one's going to the mid and tweet. Which makes them sound better. Speaking of, let's talk briefly. Hog tunes. It's a uh, and correct me if my lingo's wrong. You two experts. It's like a one way. I mean, it's not separates. I shouldn't say one way. It's not separates. The it's hog tunes is like two a, way, but not separate. Right. Yes. Yeah, so it's got the the cone in the middle. It's like mm-hmm. your typical speaker that you see, right? Cone in the middle, and then right. the outer speaker. And I think the cycle sounds are the same two way. Yeah, not you've separate. got you've got the they're not separate. It's the they're cone, not separate, but they have a separate tweeter on top of the the. So you, the you tweeter the is separate. Whatever. Well, no, it's all wired remember. into one, but they they it has a separate pod for it sticking out, like like a two way speaker, like you're putting in your car. Right, but it's separate. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's a, it's no. a two way speaker, not separate. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, we'll get to J and M, but Hardy Davidson is uh, stage one is a two separate, way three way, right? Stage one is a separate, or excuse me, stage one is a two way, not separate. Okay. The stage two is a three way, and it's they're all separate. Yeah, your mids, your bass, and your tweets are all separate speakers. Yes, yes, and that's it's cool. Yeah, um, for that reason. And one, you know cha- what I mean. One channel powers the woofer, if you will, and the other channel powers the mid range and the tweeter. There you go. For stage two, that amp is is uh, two channels per speaker, per yes. front speaker. So. Yeah, so it's power and yeah, I got you. Yep, yep, perfect. And, and you're doing they, that. All, you're doing all that adjustment via the download, which is a whole nother experience. Well, it's just a Matt's can. It's a to, can map basically. Yeah, but remember all the Matt's going to have to talk about that yep. whole download because even the dealers were like, "Well, it says it's taking it," and we're like, "No, it's not right." And so it takes a little bit. If you better hope your dealer knows what they're doing. Right. Yes. Well, and the dealers don't, and we've talked about that on the whole boombox system, guys. Yeah. Um, you kind of, unfortunately they're just well behind the curve on that. So with that said, Lurch, we hand, I need it, to take a, uh, take a, a take a sip. sip wet and, your, I need to wet my whistle. Wet, <laughs> wet your whistle. Mm-hmm. The uh, Irish boy in him says, let me win my whistle. Uh, let's go back to my, uh, pre 2014 bike. I had an 08 street glide and I put stage one Harley speakers in it. No amp, just the speakers. And I saw a big improvement. There was uh, much more sound. There's more bass, more more uh, treble, and uh, more volume. So that was a pretty economical way to up the sound out of the speakers. On this system, we decided to do the stage two because um, that was the one we had the most uh, requests on was the stage two. And it was a very easy system to install. The amp has no adjustments. You screw it in. You plug it in. Uh, the speakers just screw in and plug in. So it's very easy to install. Uh, there's no adjustments to be had. The like Rick said, all of the adjustments are made via the flash 
uh, so that you can't go in and play with the gain or play with the uh, the different frequencies. But those um, stage two speakers have crossovers on them, electric crossovers. That's right. And yeah, right so, behind. We saw them when mm-hmm. we installed them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's set up because they are separates. There's crossovers that keep the different sounds from coming through there. So you're not sending uh, the high frequency through the woofer, if you will, and you're not sending the bass through the mids and the tweets. So it's it's set up pretty well. Nicely I mean, explained yeah. for me even. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You just plug it in and go. Uh, it was, I thought the install was pretty easy. Um, everything, because it's a Harley Davidson system, uh, you don't have to do any splicing. It all just plugs right in. And once we got that done, you don't want to fire it up because uh, they haven't flashed the, they, this is the one that does require a flash. You got to flash the stereo, dumb it down, if you will, so that you're not sending all that power into the amplifier. You could damage thing, guys. You so if you do our install with the video, which it tells you, do not just go fire your system up. Get it to a dealership yeah, quick. You could definitely burn it up. So and, we, and the download is free. It's included as part of the... Now, whether they charge you labor or not is a whole other issue, but the software itself, it says right in the thing, is included in part as the kit. That's right. Thanks. Uh, so it didn't... And our dealer didn't charge us any time or any uh, shop hours to to download it for us. And we took it down there, and the problem was is they... Uh, they tried to put the wrong flash on it. They were putting a flash on it so that it would have been like an ultra, like it had two rear speakers. So they flashed it and we turned it on and it sounded like duty. It was horrible. Remember that it had no sound. Yep. I mean, it was, it wasn't even any louder than the stock speakers were. Yep. We were like, Ooh, we go, no, 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 that's not right. So they went in and uh, adjusted that and put the proper flash on it. And then it rocked. It's a really good system. We it, told them what flash to yeah, do. We did. <laughs> and uh, you know, this is the stuff you have to do with your dealership. It's right. You said it just a second ago. Did you, it's well, in your yeah, instructions. They, they take it and, to take your instructions to them guys. It says mm-hmm. in there what they need to flash it to. And these dealerships, it's not their fault. We're not talking about, about the dealerships. The mothership hardly didn't quite educate their dealerships on this stuff. And so you better make damn sure they're adjusting it to the way that it's supposed to be. And I knew it was the wrong download because when I fired it up, it had a fader control that would let me f- fade to the back. For an ultra. For an ultra, it showed a picture of an ultra. And I went, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, so I, we got the instructions I remember that. Out. And I told them, I said, you got the wrong download. This thing should be a two-speaker system only. And they're like, oh, okay, here it is. And they, they got it. But, you know, my dealer uh, in my area, when, they, when I was looking at having the stage twos put in because I was going to replace the stage you. one. And they turned around and told me straight out, they're like, yeah, we don't get this because all we're getting is mids and highs. I'm like, dude, that speaker's two channels. You have to- Yeah, you had you, to educate your own Yeah, dealership. I said, it says right here in the calc. And that's the beauty about this Harley Davidson system, not to jump in on Lurch's deal here. But you are anyway. Well, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm going to, well, because <laughs> in the 2016 Harley Davidson catalog, the beauty of Harley Davidson this year is unlike the 15 catalog, where it's all guess and the dealers are having to guess, Harley, being smart, understood what was going on. So in the new 2016 catalog, they actually have a stage two matrix um, in the catalog. So you'll see it when you go in there, and I've downloaded it to our um, Google Drive. So we always have it. Yep. But you can literally go in now, whether it's you as a consumer or the parts guy who sometimes used to work at AutoZone three weeks before. Let's face it. I mean... People are starting out new and all kinds of things. There's some professional Harley parts people out there, and I and I know several, and I respect them. But sometimes you got new guys, and they're not familiar with this stuff. This matrix now spells it out. Oh, you got a street glide. You got two speakers. Okay. Oh, you want to add saddlebags? These are the parts you know. Mm-hmm. So use that to your advantage if you start shopping. Go to that matrix first and figure out what you want to do and what you need. And whatever you do on the stage two, do it all from the beginning. That's one of the things that I learned is right. don't say I'm just going to do the speakers and the amp and then I'll add the stuff later. Buy the entire kit, yep. get it done all at once because you're going to take it in every time and have it adjusted a new flash. But that's just me. Good advice. Good advice. Back to Lurch. Good advice, Rick. Something Rick said is true. And because when we fired that system up, there was really no bass. It was pretty wimpy. And that's because that, that second channel was not firing right. because of the wrong download. Uh, once I got the proper download in, that thing is loud. It kicks. I would like to have a little bit more adjustment. Um, just you know, being an audio nerd like Rick, I'd like to be able to tweak it just a little bit because you can overpower the speakers if you crank it all the way up. But like we said earlier, but you can't crank it up. I can. I can go about three. Well, what quarter. you're talking about though is all boombox internal adjustments. 
Yeah, he's no. he's he, oh, he's oh. limited to base. And so there truck. are some adjustments on that. No, no. Let, he has let me none. let me go back to what I was saying. I, I would like I to have. Sorry. I would I would like to have uh, some okay. like Rick has, where uh, Rick can go in and adjust his gain. He can adjust what uh, gotcha. You know what frequencies are coming through his speakers. There are no adjustments with the Harley system. My only adjustments are bass, internal, and treble. Yeah, right. So. Um, gotcha. I'm tracking. Originally, I, and I, I like my treble pretty high and the bass kind of in the middle. And uh, when we had our last meeting, Rick came over and he said, "Hey, man, I play with this a lot. Let me let me show you what I, what sounds good." And he went out and he took it, the bass one spot down from neutral, and I think the treble was down two or three, and that sounded pretty good. It's dialed in right there, and I can crank it up to about three quarter volume, and then it will start distorting. But at three quarter volume, it's really loud. So. I really like his system. When we installed that, um, the three of us installed it. And I was, when he fired that baby up after he got it done and we got it back here. And I was, was this the song? Mm. Who is this? Milli Vanilli, you jackass. Don't you remember these? Jack, jack wagon. <laughs> My dad didn't let me listen to nothing but country and Creedence Clearwater and the Eagles. Blame it on the rain. Come on, tell me it brings anything. No. It brings it brings Lurch, it brings my boner to a limp soft. No, I don't remember it. You don't remember? Remember? I like to say I don't, but I do. <laughs> Thank you. He, he says, "Does it bring anything?" And it's like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. brings me as limp as a noodle. Stiffy killer. Oh God, we used to test systems. I think with Buddy's that. farting over here. Probably. Jeez. Buddy, I'm, I'm jealous dog. of his system, though. I loved that it was so clean, plug and play. I loved that that uh, two channels per speaker sound. It was mm-hmm. great. If I if I ever buy another Harley Davidson, I already told him I'm half tempted just to put the stage two into it in the front speakers just because it was that that easy. And, and at the end, we are definitely going to, this is good. I like this. Um, we'll give our little opinions if we started fresh. This is going to be the end. So yeah, this is what I people want to know. I just so, ruined it for you. No, no, no. You, you didn't say you would. You didn't say you would because I'm going to stick you to what you would do right now, tomorrow, if you got a new bike and any of these systems not you had. Yet, not yet. Well, That's we'll get to end. it. So what I would say, go ahead, is, go ahead. What I would say is, it's one of the easiest to install because it is a Harley Davidson brand system, and our video makes it super and our simple. Video makes Dude, it if you so follow the instructions, easy. it's going to be one of the hardest to yes. install. Yes, plug one three two A into one three two B. Uh, trust me, you got to get our. If you're going to do this, don't do the instructions. And we're not just trying to sell no, that no, to no, you no. guys. You, Buy you, the video oh because God. we we painstakingly and I'd already been through two amp installs, and I still had to think about it at times. Yeah, and I will tell you. The video will make it so damn easy. Don't pay your dealer three hours worth of labor. Buy the system. Three hours, I'll charge you more than that. Yeah, but whatever it is, buy the system wherever you want to buy it, online, whatever. Well, of but, course, Adventure Hardy uh, Well, yeah, but I'm going to tell you. Affiliate. Uh, I think he agrees. After we did that video, we're like, holy smokes, this was simple. So as I was saying, yes. it's one, <laughs> it's one taking, of the, it's one of the easiest to install. pulling ins- it back. It's one of the easiest to install. Uh, it's it's loud. It sounds good, uh, but the downside is it's one of the most expensive ones. It's right around a thousand bucks. And just think, if you started adding the lowers and you started adding the um, the saddleback speakers, that would get a very expensive. Oh yeah, system. it is spendy. I saw one in Vegas like that when I bought my bike. This guy pulled up and he. I just thought of one thing. So when we went to the dealers and did you just ha- pull it back from Rick? I did. Nice. You, you guys have been stealing away from me You're all right. night. It's, I'm taking it's it back. Turn. I'm taking it back. I'm going to steal a slogan too. Hey, would, you turn, right. t- turn his mic off. Um, at the dealers, they have these setups where they have the different speakers, you know, stage one, stage two, no amp, stage two, an amp, and you can turn them up and they've got music and everything. This stage two sounds really loud. It's got a lot of boom, but it's in a different enclosure. Yeah. It's not in a fairing. It's in a, it's in a base not a base closure but it's in a big square box and so there's more um, space behind the speaker and you get a different sound from it so it didn't quite sound like it did in you know on the wall there at the dealership but it, it's a very good system. My so, sense. No, awesome um, and good insight. So high points, low. I, I guess if you want to do pros and cons. Most expensive system. That's uh, that's a downside. You're gonna shell out some put some mm-hmm. Benjamins on that, guys. Um, you're nearing a thousand dollars on that. That's just the front system, of course. Um, I guess plug and play for the most part. Very confusing with the instructions, but our video will make it super simple because obviously we figured all of that out and then explain it in biker terms instead of 
engineer terms. Right. Um, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash boom install is how you get that. Um, so sound, as far as sound goes, Sal, can you turn yours all the way up with zero distortion? No. I'm not saying that's a good measure. I'm just asking, yeah, but we, would you need to? to explain no. this. Okay. Explain this. So we, we've been discussing this. Uh, I think we talked about it a little bit in this podcast earlier, and we've discussed it amongst ourselves is if you can turn a stereo to full volume and then it doesn't distort, is that really a, is that a true measurement of how the system sounds? I say no. Um, it doesn't matter if it's half, three quarters, or full. Is it loud and is it clear, right? So if you're J&M with the stereo maxed, which is clear, or mine at three quarters, which is clear, are equally as loud, then what's the difference? It doesn't matter. But I will tell you this, that you can overdrive the speakers. If you crank it full volume, you will distort those speakers. It's a lot of power going to them. It's um, and when you get around three quarter to eighty percent, seventy five, eighty percent, you're you're right about the max where that stereo system is going to be. You go over that, you're going to start distorting it and possibly doing speaker damage. But it's insanely loud at seventy five, eighty percent volume. You wouldn't need any more, basically. Right. So, okay. And uh, uh, the nice thing, the plus point, probably the highest point of the Hardy system is the actually three separate speakers. Um, and that the way that works, guys, you'll see it in our video is there's a grill and it's got the crossover on it. It's got the, anyways, the way you put that, assemble it into the fairing um, has that three way. So, all right. Anything else on that before we move on to J&M and then we can round it up and we can talk. Maybe it'll bring up some other points. No, I think we should move on to J&M. All our videos work for, it doesn't matter if you have a, shark nose fairing like a road glide or you have a bat wing fairing like a uh, street glide or a ultra our videos work for both guys the reason is is we had multiple bikes on hand and during these installs and we have previous footage so it doesn't matter which one you have guys they're both basically exactly the same except how you take the fairing off and then the inside is just a little bit different but we show you both we show you the different the minor differences um, which we really wouldn't even had to do. You would have figured it out, but we went above and beyond like we do with all our videos. And, uh, and we showed you both those bikes again, all these videos are good for the shark nose install, um, uh, on these systems or the bat wing type fairing. So have no fear there. Um, all right. So that's, yeah, I guess that's the high point. Um, but it is the most expensive, but it, it does sound good. I, I say I was impressed. I mean, I was impressed with cycle sounds. I was impressed with, the Harley Davidson system. Hey, Rick, since you brought the sponsor on, you don't have to, dude. Just tell me, do you want to try this? Sure. Okay, here we go. All right, he's going to try our sponsor here. Here you go. That's right, Bikeaholics. This episode brought to you by our friends over at Biker Planet. They obviously care about the biker community by supporting this very show. So let's show them some love. Biker Planet, it's more than just the large snitch bake biker dating site it's an entire social community of bikers even if you're not interested in dating looking for a date or a relationship well then find a dating relationship with someone that loves motorcycles and the lifestyle just like you you're not looking for a date no problem then just simply head on over there and connect with other bikers around the world plan rides meetups or just socialize the website is super clean and user friendly you can chat search See who's online, browse photos, and check your own private mailbox. Absolutely no commitment, and it's free to check it out. Use our special custom link, though, so you get all the perks and a lifetime discount of 50% should you choose to become a full member. Go over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash biker planet. That's the link to use. Go have some fun, boys and girls. Yeah. Nice job, sir. I have to say, that was pretty damn good, Rick. And I, I did not prep him to do that usually i run the sponsor stuff but i like uh getting you guys involved in that so good job rick well done i made a few little flubs but doesn't matter it's fun i'm reading i'm reading up there cindy's probably laughing because i know she's (laughs) listening he's like he's looking up there and he can actually see that yeah that's funny no great job lurch you'll get to do that eventually and so yeah hit that link up guys it helps us out let them know uh lawbiddingbiker.com forward slash biker planet they obviously you know like the biker community they're willing to support us so with that said let's uh Jump in. We do have uh, a couple more things. I'm looking at this episode. Uh, we're doing pretty good. We're going to finish up on J&M, and I had some emails we probably won't get to because this episode's going long. All right, so before we do that, let me just talk about J&M. 
All right. So, do you guys want to say anything? Because Rick, I'm out because I me. wasn't involved. That's in right. It. Yeah, uh, Matt, do you want to, me to start with JM or you want to rock with it? Uh, well, why don't you start with it and I'll uh, interject where I think it's appropriate. So J and M was our last system that we tried. I took the hog tunes out of my bike only because we wanted to try this system. Um, we had heard a lot about it. There's a lot of bad things on the internet about J and M. There's also a lot of good things. Um, it's kind of a mismatch. I don't know if they've had bad products or I, it, issues with, okay. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I, see, I saw a lot of weird, some shit. of the things I've seen were some people weren't thrilled with the customer service. Right. And uh, well, another thing is, is the, they had a system set up for the pre 14 bikes and I think they had it dialed in. And when they moved mm. to the 14 and up, I think they had some growing pains and they had some problems, but they've got it figured out. And you'll talk about how your system is, um, you know, whereas the cycle sounds and Rick's system, you could probably use that amp in a pre 14 because you don't have to worry about uh, moving it down to a line in. So they did it externally so they can use that same app and other uh, applications where I, as I just looked online with J and M they've got different setups. So the 14 and up has one amp and then 13 and down has another. So they've made their changes. I think most of the problems were, when the 14s first came out, they had some growing pains, had some issues. I think it's resolved because your setup is is pretty good. That's what I read too. I, I, it, I researched it when you said you were putting it in. And most of it, anything from 14 and newer, was literally people saying, oh, I had all this distortion and they say it's so great. They, they had to do exactly what Harley. There's a reason why Harley did that system this way. They want to proprietize it. So, right. I mean, these companies are having to learn and that's why Bill had told me, Hey, trust me, it's going to continually evolve. They're going to, if they can find some way to make it so that you cannot use aftermarket products, they will. Yep. Good old HD. We love our HD bikes, but they're, uh, constantly trying stuff like that, which concerns me. But yeah, we've talked about another podcast before you buy a Ford truck. You don't go down the Ford dealer for every, uh, thing you want to bolt onto it. You don't go down there and get, you know, the uh, floor mats from Ford, you don't right. get all, you know, tinted windows from Ford. You, you go out to other dealers. Um, Harley's kind of got a deal where they sell you a bike and then you come back and buy a bunch more parts from them. I mean, it's a pretty good setup. They got something going yeah. on there, don't they? And they're pushing a little bit with yeah. the boombox system and mm -hmm. trying to be so proprietary, which can turn some people off too. So without getting into that. Yeah. Um, Talk about the install. Yeah. So J&M. So last system we tried. Um <sighs> All right, J&M, about 850 price point. Um, so it's right in there. It's a little more than Cycle Sounds. It's a little less uh, than the Hardy-Davidson Stage 2 system. Our video is going to get you right through the install, without a doubt. As usual, the engineers wrote the instructions. They will confuse the shit out of you. So just go get the video, lawbindingbiker.com forward slash J and A-N-D-M, J and M. That's where that uh, video resides. Plug and play for the most part. We'll show you where to put everything. No splicing like the cycle sounds. Um, there's there's no uh, none of that. No magic boxes. We alluded to this earlier. Somehow J&M has it figured out so that it dumbs the signal down in the amp. So there's nothing in between. Now where hog tunes, I'll, I'll refer to hog tunes where the signal was going straight from the boom box into the amp and it was clear they didn't dumb it down because we were getting distortion at half volume with the hog tunes, even though it was still great sounding up to that point, much louder than the stock system. Somehow J and M has figured it out, uh, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not an engineer. I, I don't really know what's inside that amp, but they're somehow they have to, because you don't have to have it flashed. And yes, lurch, uh, some amplifiers can accept a speaker level in, and, mm. but most of them are designed to accept a line level in, like we talked about earlier. That's that low level sound. And, but you can buy amps that accept a speaker level in. So I think maybe that's what they did. They just, they've just they they've designed it to accept that higher level uh, input. Wow. See, that's the insight that you get by bringing these smart guys into the studio because I try to explain it the best I can, but these guys have a lot of experiences. So good. So maybe that's what they did. Anyways, they got that figured out. And so plug and play. We'll show you where to put everything. Uh, and then the speakers. So the speakers, um, of course, the only other system we're talking about that actually has separates. 
So Cycle Sounds is not separates. Hog Tunes isn't separates. Hardy Davidson Stage 2 is three separates. It's got all of them separated. The J&M is separates as far as the tweets go. So there's one speaker for the mids and the bass, your typical speaker looking speaker with a cone in the middle. And then over the top of that is that tweeter. Okay. And so you've got at least separates in, in two of the speakers, actual separates. Um, and so once we got it up and going, the nice thing is again, the J and M does not require a, so let me break this down for you. The J and M does not require a Harley Davidson download for you to take your system in and get it flashed if you have never effed with your boombox. So if you have never screwed with your boombox, see the boombox out of the factory comes set to zero amps and four speakers. That is the stock setup within your boombox system. So if you've never screwed with that, So what I'm getting at is if you have installed another system and you had your boombox flashed for some reason, then you're going to need to get it flashed. But if you have the stock configuration, like I did, because I didn't have to do anything, um, it was from the factory and it's basically set to zero amps and four speakers. Well, that, which I think is brilliant on J&M's part, we're not sponsored by J&M. This is all independent guys. We bought that at full price, the J&M system. I saved up for a long time for it. And with Patreon support, of course, the Patreons, I was able to sock away some money and get it. Um, But I'm saying that... um, And you went through our Amazon. You clicked through our Amazon link so that we got a little kickback on it. That's right. Our affiliate link, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you guys do, or you can get it from RevZilla, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash banners. Thanks for bringing that up. B-A-N-N-E-R-S. Click through any of those banners. Mm -hmm, That's right. No additional cost to you. We get a small kickback. And Lurch actually purchased the system because I had him on that project and he uh, purchased it through one of our affiliate banners. So good job, Lurch. All right. So um, now I see you completely said, well, well, go ahead. I'll get you back on track, but I want to say something mm-hmm. just for the audience. Uh, when you're talking about flashing your stereo, we're talking about changing the configuration of amps and speakers, your software, right. up, your software updates and things like that do not change that. So thank you. If you have not, gone to the dealer and had them alter your setup as far as amps and speakers it'll be zero amps four speakers nice and that's what you were talking about oh way to way to bring that in very good um and so i didn't have to and i think that's brilliant on jm's part again we're not being sponsored by them i'm just saying they got that figured out because they're like most people will have a stock system and we're gonna configure it to however their boom box is set up so we don't they don't have to dick with it and they can just rock out uh, with their cock out right on our system they can just fire it right up so or with a J&M, rock out with his hawk out with a hawk out i like it i like it um so j&m uh 100 so 850 uh, oh. 165 per channel right 300 watt amp yeah yes yes it is uh which is what is 165 times two what is that it's more than 330 it's 330 okay. so it's a 330 amp it's putting out 165 watts per channel um, and again, no flash, um, separate speakers, which is really nice. And two way speakers, not separate. They're not separate. Mm-mm. What's the, I thought they were, am weren't, I? They all, weren't they all one piece? No, I thought they were set. Weren't they separates, Rick? Oh God. Do we I have to look this up? I wasn't involved. I'm going to say it, they're uh two way, not separates, but continue and I'll look as you're talking. What's the difference between two way? A two way we talked about earlier is a speaker that has a, a woofer and it's got a separate oh, little tweeter in the middle. Which, but right? it comes out from the speaker. Yes. It's, but it, you're right. So that's a two way. You're but right. It's not a separate. Ah, oh, see, it's not my a bad. separate piece. My bad. Versus the, the hog tunes is just one speaker. All one. It is. You're right, man. So the Harley Thank Boom you. is actually three individual speakers. Yes. And separate speakers. The separate. cycle sounds and the stage one Harley Davidson's are two ways. Right. The and tweeter, even though the little mushroom comes out, the little mushrooms, you that know, it's, that's not a separate. Gotcha. A my bad. Mm-hmm. Very uh, love having you guys in here that's what i'm talking about so all right so two-way mm-hmm. okay good good terminology there you go sorry to confuse the audience that's i'm glad you caught me on that um so we got it all hooked up they do have adjustments on their amp but they got stickers over it yeah and it says if you remove the stickers you avoid the warranty oh yeah true yeah good point it's in our video uh-huh. yes and so they probably because you'll blow up your speakers or something you know you'll overdrive your speakers they've they, you know, they had some nerd in the shop there dialing it in. And he did a good job. You know, don't mess with it. Don't take your stickers off. Don't mess with it. Just plug it in. 
it's ready for you. And they kind of made it plug and play that way, which is really nice where Rick had to spend a lot of time, which is okay. Um, cause he has some extra capabilities of adjusting. I did not. And I will tell you that I put this system in for a price point of eight fifty. Didn't know what to expect. We got it all installed, got it filmed for you guys. And, uh, comes with a little thumb drive. They send you some music, some test music, like we were talking about, like beat it, even though whatever you think of that song, uh, it has like, I don't know, 12 songs on it and they want you to play it through to test the system. And me and Lurch, uh, we finished a long day and the install and we started cracking a couple frosties and we put that thumb drive in and we started cranking the J&M rocker. And I can tell you that we both had grins from ear to ear and again, not that Cycle Sounds wasn't good sound, not that Hardy Davidson, and I'm not saying j m Rocker is the best, but it absolutely was, I have to say, from some of the stuff we read, and like you said, they may have, have it dialed in. We're not going to get back into that, but we, I guess we didn't know what to expect. Um, I had heard it at Sturgis, and I liked it. I heard all the systems at Sturgis, minus hog tunes, but uh, the thing absolutely is dialed in. No adjustments. The way they have it dialed in, I am able to, again, we're not sure this is the way to, to dial this or to, to, to judge the system, but I can crank my J&M to the last bar and there's zero distortion and the son of a bitch just fucking rocks, man. I mean, it hits, it's clean, it's clear, and uh, I have been thoroughly impressed. Uh, I don't have anything to say bad about the J&M system from the install um, to the sound to the lack of uh, necessity to flash the system. But I digress and say the Harley Davidson Stage 2 probably sounds just as good um, for a price point of 100 more. So you can't turn it up all the way, but I bet side by side, they sound the same. So one, you can turn up all the way. The other, you can't cycle sounds rocks out too, man. The thing I was up here in the studio setting up and you guys were playing that cycle sounds. And I thought it was my J and M because you guys were playing the same songs. I thought you were. So it, that's a, it's a, it's a hard game. It's really comes down to price. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, Corey Williams in the blab there. Yeah, he says ahead. he had a J and M system on his uh, 2011 road glide and it was sick. Mm, there you go. Corey Williams in the chat live blab guys. And that's why we love the live experience. We and got there's guys. a couple different J and M systems. You might want to, you did a lot of research on this. Maybe explain that to him because there's the rocker and then there's the rocker extreme too. So I did the rocker XX extreme. So if you're looking for the system I'm talking about, you'll want to get the 330 amp, 165 Watts per channel. It's the rocker XX extreme front amp and speaker system for a 2014 and newer Harley Davidson touring motorcycle. Cause you're right, Rick. So hopefully that was very specific about the system I'm talking about guys. All the systems we're talking about are for 2014 and newer, although there's a lot of tidbits of information for previous bikes and it's about a price point of 850, depending on where you get it, depending on what kind of sales they have going on. You looking at something else, Lurch? Well, I just made a horrible noise. That you're going to have to edit that I'm out. I'm going to have to but edit you're the that audio, out. You're, I can't you're, believe I did that. You're the producer. And see, oh. that's the great thing about an audio producer. He caught himself on what he did. He goes, damn it, I'm going to have to edit that a little l- snap out. A lip smack and a hiss. <laughs> and I'll cut that out. You won't even hear it in post. But anyways, it. <laughs> they had the Rocker Double X Extreme. If it was me, I think I might have called it the Rocker Triple X Extreme. And then the other one is the JNM and Performance Series. So it's almost like a stage one and a stage two, if you will. The uh, performance series is more like your stage one, and the extreme is more like a stage two. So we were trying to, as best as we could, um, compare like systems: the stage two on the on the boom, the cycle sounds, the uh, J and M, and the hog tunes. We're trying to get stuff that was kind of all in the same ballpark, that, so that we could fairly. Uh, compare them against each other. Oh, see, and we didn't bring that up. That's good. These were all, yeah, great, Lurch. These were all comparable systems um, as far as that market and those type of price points and what they uh, put out, basically. We really tried to get it close. Those are probably your four competing big systems. We talked about, obviously, some other systems that people wanted to test. If you go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash J and M, J A N D M, that's where the, video resides, but I have so much information for you guys there. Um, 
here's two affiliate links. If you purchase the kit through these links, there's the JNM Rocker XX Extreme 330 watt speaker and amp kit for touring 2014 to 2016. And then you've got one for the Road Glide 2015, 2016. Um, but the affiliate, it, it, that's, those are the exact, if you go to that article where the video is, those are the exact kits that I used if you're confused at all about what we use. So see that though? Look at, yeah, they I'm are look, separate. I'm looking that's at what them. I'm saying. I was, I was double checking to go. Uh, I was Good wrong. job, Rick. Way to remember. Oh, you weren't even here. Never mind. Rick's like, I wasn't even here. No, I've just heard it. So we digress. I was right. The JNM Rocker XX Extreme is not two way. Yes. It's actually separate. Right. So it's got one speaker with the bass and the mids, and then it's actually the grill or not a grill, but a it's ring. A two way separate. It's two way separate. Oh, thank you. Is that what they call it? That's a two way separate. So it's got a two way, and then it actually the tweeter is actually separate. So mm -hmm. I'm, glad, I'm glad we looked at anybody ever want to do a three way? <laughs> I do. I know we do, but the women don't. No, because life doesn't work that way, dude. Yeah, we have fantasies of that but that's not those those are only in porn sounds dude. like a lot of work right it might be we mess with so many systems now i'm starting to get some confused so i apologize yeah two ways no, at least we corrected it before yeah, we put the podcast separate. out so it does have the tweeter separate yes where harley davidson has all three separate where cycle sounds doesn't have any of them separate cycle sounds and hog tunes are two-way separates right uh two ways sorry two, two ways two ways right man yeah. right no and and where J and M is two way separate. Yes. And where Harley is three way separate. Yes. Yeah. Is I, that would, right? I would say that the hog tunes and the cycle sounds are more similar um, to the Harley Davidson stage one. However, I say, I will tell you from experience, they're better because the, they're doing more with it. Like the cycle sounds is doing 75 Watts per channel for four speakers or 150 right. per speaker, depending on but what you But it still doing. rocks, man. It does, and I People will tell will you. People will be happy with it, it. It kicks my Harley-Davidson Stage 1 in the balls. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it's a lot better. Stage 1, Harley-Davidson Stage 1, not yeah, my, Stage my, 2, yeah, like on Lurch's no, no. bike, right? Yeah, the Harley-Davidson Stage 1, that four-speaker kit with the amp is like 799 bucks, And for basically about the same amount of money, the cycle sounds was a lot better. Right. But the stage two, your two systems are more comparable um, with the Harley Davidson stage two right. and yours, just just the way it worked out. Right. That yeah, good. These are what people wanted tested. They wanted the hog tunes. They wanted the cycle sounds in cycle sounds. That's what they offered, and so that's what we did. What do you have to add to your JM? Were you wrapped up there? Do you think? I just want to say that this is the song you were playing when you pulled in today, Lurch. It was. Look at to call. <laughs> Phone and dial the seven oh, digits. Right, Yo, Yo, this, this big daddy, this baby. baby. Let's get down in it. Woo! <laughs> oh my god, dude. Not at it. her door. <laughs> that is I what have an idea. I what shit you not. That's what he in pulled store. in. I heard it outside my garage. I'm setting up film gear for the law abiding biker film studio down in the garage. They say like, you were a virgin until you met me. I was the first to make you hot. Wet, wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Cr I had to crank up on the way in. Oh my God. Yeah. I see Corey Williams in there. All right. So we're going to get close to wrapping this up and give our last opinions. Do you guys want to thank, of course we never ever balk at a flat donation. We love our patrons, but we never balk at a flat donation. If that's how you want to support us, why don't you thank these people lurch? We got Renee Foglio of Tabernacle, New Jersey, Michael Lysak of Yorba Linda, California, and Dennis Jones of Apple Valley, California. Thank how'd you they, very much for they your donate, donation. Lurch? Forward slash donate. Lawabidingbacker.com forward slash donate. Take action, guys. We appreciate it. And they want to be part of the biker revolution. And they love what we're doing. And that lets us know that we know that they know that they love. That we know that they that know. We that know we that know that we're doing. Yeah. Anyways. So let's. Uh, opinion this, time. Opinion time. Okay. So um, why don't we go. Here's the question, and this is really people listen to this whole episode and get a whole bunch of tidbits, but at the end of the day, just like in the video, and again, if you want to get that, it's over on YouTube channel and on our website if you want to get the four audio breakdown. If you want to get a much shorter version without all the detail, you can watch my video and I tell you, uh, I break down the high points and the low points, which we're going to do right now. All right, and then we're going to take this episode out because it's been a long one, but... Uh, Definitely a long time coming. So 
here's the question. And then we're going to do a round table. And uh, the question <laughs> is, what do you, what do you, opinions are like assholes, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I love that saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, dude. Well, but the thing is, is that's missing from that is opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. And they all stink. And they all stink. That's right. <laughs> And some are tight that's and in some our, are loose. The, what we're talking about, everybody in podcast format, we're live on Blab, and uh, um, and people are commenting in the chat room. That was Kickstart BBQ. So, all right. So here's the question, because we have a lot of experience in this room, based on over a year of system installs and testing, and I'll tell you guys that these all systems, none of them have failed. We've all rocked these. We've been riding with them. Um, they continue to rock. We haven't had any problems as far as that, you know, the, the amps and stuff like that. The only thing I, I mentioned real quick is, you know, J&M puts out a lot of stuff. We've never done this test, but if you see their videos, they do some videos where they do decibel tests and they run a uh, Hardy Davidson stage two system for like 14 hours and they leave a video camera on. And after multiple hours, it gets hot and it starts cutting out. Then they run their J and M system, and for the same amount of time, up to fourteen hours at like high high volumes. Of course, the bikes are on battery chargers and tenders, but and they don't get the amp overheat and you know the cutting out. We haven't done that test. J and M is the one doing the test, so I'm not saying that they're. I don't know what they're doing, but take it for what it's worth. Um. Number one, I'll say on those tests, the bike isn't moving, so there's no airflow. And even though your fairing's on, you're still getting some airflow through that fairing. Number two, how many people turn their stereo system all the way up and run it for 14 hours? Take it for what it's worth. I'm not dogging J&M for that. I'm not dogging the the Hardy system for that. You're going to see those videos on YouTube. And of course, J&M's putting those videos out. Um, I don't know, Lurch, you've ran the shit out of yours and you haven't had it cut out. No. It will, and, and that's a real world real life riding around. So I just wanted to mention that. So here's the question. If you bought a new bike tomorrow, a 2014 or newer touring road glide, street glide, ultra, whatever it may be. And you had right now in your pocket, a thousand dollars burning a hole in your pocket and you want a better audio system because we have to say that you have an amount of money, right? Because if you only have 450, then you're buying the hog tunes. I get it. You're still going to be happy. But for the sake of argument, regardless of price, and maybe I'm not, I'm going to leave it at that. $1,000 burning a hole in your pocket. And you're like, I want to get better sound out of my Hardy Davidson boombox system. Where? No, we know where you're going to go. You're going to go to lawbitingbiker.com forward slash banners, B-A-N-N-E-R-S, and you're going to hit one of our affiliate banners and you're going to purchase that system so you can uh, help support us. But which system are you going to get and why? That's the question. Right. Who's first? It's intense. I'm do, just saying, do, 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 mm. do, 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 just, do, It's intense. Do, do, do. We're all going around the room. Lurch is twiddling. He's got his hands crossed. He's twiddling his fingers. I am not I got twiddling. The stare. I am not I'm giving twiddling. the stare. Yeah, big daddy's over there giving me the stare. He's mm. got his hands crossed. Oh yeah, he's doing. Oh, the finger on the cheek. Yeah, I'm doing the thinking man. I'm doing the. I'm doing the. <laughs> dude, we need to get a blonde Dutch boy wig and have you do that. <laughs> I'm doing the two hands under the chin. Oh, I can do the. No. The, the pinky and the side of the mouth. Oh, uh, yeah. That's uh, Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil. Yes. Okay. Enough fucking around. Let's Enough get fucking serious. around. So, who wants to start? I'll go first. All things, Wait a man up. Thank you. Wait a nut up. All things being equal, I'm going to put hog tunes at the bottom. And well, like we said, if, you've, if all you've got is the 500 bucks, it's going to be a big improvement over stock but I just don't think it competes with the other three. I did not have a uh, uh, firsthand experience of installing the cycle sounds. Uh, and it sounds good now that Rick has it all dialed in. Um, but I'm going to say for your average biker out there that may not have the skills that uh, are necessary to tweak that, I would uh, probably put that next. And then my top two would be the J&M and the Harley. 
because I got to think of the uh, average biker out there and think about the ease of install and um, the the lack of having to adjust. And I'm kind of torn, but here's what I'll go with because I do like that stage two. But I, what did I tell you after we got the JM system in your bike? I said, if I had to do it over again, I think I'd take the JM. So while I have the stage two of my bike, and um, I think I'm going to have to go JM because I said it uh, without thinking about it, and it's probably the truth. So well, I, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, my top, my top, they're, they're, they're all, like I said, cycle sounds. J&M and Harley, I think they're all right there. But if I had to pick, I'd probably go J&M because it's a hundred bucks cheaper. It's easy to install and you don't have to have the flash. Well done, dude. You just zip that up. Nice. Um, the high points, yeah, man, good, good. So there you go. Moving over to Big BD Dad. Kane, who is just <clears throat> deep yeah. in thought there and it cleared his throat, which means Usually, that means you're preparing to give a long speech. No. Well, excuse me. Take a few minutes. I just want to listen to this time. Out. Go ahead, dude. The you're the so man. I'm going to throw out two caveats before I give my short answer. Yeah, bullshit. Nope. <laughs> no nope. caveats allowed. Nope. Two caveats. <laughs> I'm basing this on these four systems because I am sure there are other systems out there I would love to listen to and install, and and they no, could we are. be That's or what could this not be better. Right. We're so not. We're just talking about these four. These systems. four systems. Number two, if Bikertronics wants to send us something, we'll test it. All right, go ahead. Number number two, <laughs> Bikertronics. Oh, hey, don't don't forget about oh, sorry, J- JL Audio now has a oh, yeah. kick ass amp that. So does MTX. Magaz- JL Audio right? has an amp that is like this big. It's about the size of a Cuba C C four. That was it, one thing. Your you, amp, hey, it's whoa, whoa. 200 watts. How do you know what a size of C4 is? Because we have Cuba a bomb C4. squad. And I've but seen he, it. he's right. JL Audio is good stuff. They're 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 woofers. They're amps. Tits. Uh, kickers making stuff empty. There's lots. Right. Of, there's lots. We, Kicker. we, 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 we yeah. could go on for the next three years testing different. And systems. we will, but yeah, I will tell will. you that new JL audio amp. That's like that. And it's only 200 Watts, but I hear it is cool. Tough. And we're going to continue but, this guys. So, we're going to continue. This is just based on these four systems that we have knowledge of what we're going to buy thousand bucks, burning a hole in our pocket. So, we will continue system test yes so the caveat versus these four second caveat is that a lot of people say too they many wanna, caveats no no just two <laughs> that a lot of people say <laughs> the reason why i'm gonna buy the harley is because i can have it installed when i first get the bike and it's covered under warranty don't so, get so, screwed so i am saying with that out the door that thought process because somebody's going to argue with us when we don't say, do i know i somebody's going to argue with us because they're going to say the reason why i went with the harley is because the minute i put that j m system in it voided my stereo warranty and stuff like that and we've seen that it didn't we, void we, your boom box warranty that's bullshit no but there's people that think that yes so i'm so I'm, let's I'm, tell them what the truth is well the truth is people it doesn't void your warranty it doesn't void your boom box warranty at all it, now, as far as the J&M warranty, that's up to J&M between you and J&M. But unless you think different, Big Daddy, I'm just saying it does not void your boombox no, warranty. No, but that's one of the things they sell. Hey, you want this stage two? You let us install it. It's all covered. Anything we put on Correct. right now is all covered under the two-year warranty. And what do we say to that? One what year. do you say to that? What's the truth? Well, the truth is Thank the you. stereo. If the stereo goes out, it has nothing to do with that in an external amp. So what do you... What do you tell the audience wants to know what Big Daddy Kane thinks about that? What what do you tell the audience? Bullshit. Bullshit. There you go. So with those two caveats done, my short answer is is I would buy the J and M. Why? I like it because of the ease of instruction, uh, the ease of installation that you guys told me about. I've heard the system. I like it. I like the fact that they're doing the uh, line level stuff within the amp instead of the magic box. Although the magic, don't be scared away. No, please we're don't. Talk, yeah. We're talking about a big price difference here. We're yes. talking about a two speaker system with cycle sounds is going to save you about two or 300 bucks. And I will tell you, you will be happy with it, but you're going to tinker with it. But if that's your thing, go for it. But if I had to choose right now, I got a brand new road glide special. I'm going to put in the JM, and the reason very is because of the sound, the ease of installation, J and M, I, I couldn't believe when I started hearing people talking shit about J and M saying how they were crappy. I'm like, really? They've been some of the leaders in, in, in forever. Now I understand a lot of those people, as soon as we put them on the carpet and not that's figuratively, we didn't, we didn't really, we, we were always nice right. people. They but don't we like said, the owner, but we're like, Oh, uh, what was, 
what did you put that? Well, it was my brand new 14 and I put it in and had issues. Really? Because we're not having anything. Things evolved. Things changed. And every time we do a software download with Harley Davidson, I get a little concerned of, are they changing something that's going to change the way my system sounds? Whether that's possible or not, I don't know. But it's clean. It's easy to install the way you guys described it. It's easily accessible from several mini markets. And it's at a price point that's less than the um, Harley Davidson Stage 2. But if my bike was a CVO or my bike already came with the Stage 2, I wouldn't balk at it one bit. And I sure in the hell wouldn't take it out because his system sounds good. Mm, hard hitting, dude. I totally like it. Um, all right. So is it my turn? No, yeah. you don't get an opinion. Go yeah, ahead and wrap this right. up. Let's just wrap it up. Wrap your shit up. Hold on. Let me see if buddy, wake up, buddy. Did you have an opinion? No, he doesn't. So I guess it's your turn. Buddy, the studio doc dude uh, has no opinion. All right. So good, Rick. That was great. Great breakdown. Cause I, I'll tell you coming in the studio tonight, I didn't know what these guys were going to say. We don't talk about this stuff before on purpose guys. Cause it adds another dimension to the show. It's not scripted. I, we've all had our experiences, but we never really sat down and said, ask that question. I saved it for the audience. All right. So when it comes down to these four systems, I really like uh, hog tunes. Uh, I, I did. Um, it was great for the price point. If that's the price point I was at, and I have been at points in that life in, in my life where I've been at that price point, don't think you'll be disappointed. I really like cycle sounds. Me and Rick put that on and we were here late at night, one night, many oh, months man, ago. That was 16 hour day. It was a long day. Um, it's not going to take you guys 16 hours, take you a couple hours, oh. four hours, because we had to film it and we've got to s- figure it all out and then film it. And we got to do second shots and third shots and second, it, it's a mess. We're filming it. So that's different, but it was a long day and me and Rick sat here and had some cold frosties and we were we, like, holy smokes. This we is- were impressed. Mm-hmm. And I think you would be so happy with a cycle sounds at the price point of six fifty. Our video will get you right through the install process. All right. Hardy Davidson stage two. The thing that I really liked about the Hardy Davidson stage two, when we were installing at Lurch and, and at first glance, of course, the ease of installation, which J and M is too. Um, cycle sounds has the extra crimping, um, the extra screwing like a car with the twisting of wires. And I, not saying I was put off by that, but the thing I really liked about the Hardy Davidson where I was like, it's gotta sound pretty damn good while installing it because it had the 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 separates the three-way separates i say that right yes you did okay the three-way separates and i was like fuck they got it they got it nailed down they're using separate speakers for each range and i go that's gotta that's gotta kick ass and you know the the we had to do the flash which you know should be free at your dealerships guys i know some dealerships are charging but we know our dealers and Technically, they're not supposed to be charging. Figure it out with your dealership. All right. Um, so before we were able to have fun with it, that was the only down, one of the down things to, to that system is having to run down before we could listen to it. You got to make an appointment. We're lucky we can just roll in any time for small stuff like that. But um, but the thing sounds, I was impressed. Me and Lurch again came back. It was a long day of filming and we had a couple of Frosties and I was like, damn dude that's what i'm getting that that's what i said now j and m rocker came about um we had been uh uh i won't get into that we had been working behind the scenes but they gave us they basically we bought that system at cost so we're not working with them at all um we just decided to buy it and do our own independent test um i did not know what to expect i've already alluded to that we got it installed it and me and Lurch were here again late at night. And I didn't, I honestly didn't, I don't know why in my mind, I had heard the cycle sounds and I heard the Harley stage two. And I was like, man, it's going to be hard to beat those two systems. I was like, damn. But we cranked that son of a bitch up, dude. And with that thumb drive that they gave in the music to test, I was, I could not sleep that night. Um, I was super excited about that system. You're just laying in bed with a Woody. In thinking fact, about after you left, rolling down the road, I did. rocking out. I smoked a you cigar. You went back out there and turned it back on. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I sat naked on my motorcycle with a cigar and a beer. <laughs> and, uh, did my you nut, at least my have a sock sack, on it? My nut sack up on the tank. Oh, lean back. Can you picture it? it? No, I've seen it. <laughs> 
Just my socks don't, on that. Don't it. don't roll up next to him and have him point down on his lap and look because it might be a sack <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> I have been known to do that. And I will tell you straight up, this system uh, just absolutely impressed. The price point is $100 less. No download. I didn't have to adjust it at all. Um, like I say, there's tape over the adjustments. They have that thing so dialed in as long as your boom box is factory. What I mean by factory is you've never had a flash, not updated, but never had a flash to adjust it for any other stereo system. It's plug and play. Our video gets you through it. I can turn that thing all the way up to full blast. It hits hard. You can feel it in your chest as much as you're going to get from a motorcycle and uh, zero distortion. And I played so much music on that thing over time. Um, testing different songs and stuff. Hands down, if I have the question, a thousand dollars in my pocket and a brand new touring bike, I'm going to save a hundred bucks and I'm going to go install the JM Rocker XX Extreme. And then I'm going to save that extra hundred bucks and I'm going to take all you fuckers out and we're going to get a couple pitchers of beer and smoke cigars and we're going to listen to it while we're spending that extra hundred dollars. All right. That's what I have to say. Any follow-up, guys? This has been a long episode, and then we're going to take it out. I think that is a lot of information for people, man. And uh, did we thank these? Did we do the donations? Yep, we yes, did. Yes, we did. All right. Any any uh, thing you guys want to say before we take it out? I'm good. I've said my piece. Man, that was an episode long time coming. And we have the YouTube video out, which explains it probably, I think it's like a seven, eight-minute video, but it break, basically break down breaks down the last part of what we just talked about what's the pros what's the cons what's the price what should you get you're going to be happy with any of the systems guys you have to do what your price point is um i hope we didn't sound like we we're talking bad about any of those systems because we're not yet rick nope and just remember there's going to be a lot of people out there with opinions these are the first four so wait for the other ones you don't you don't need to hate on us we're, yep we're going to be testing forever so understand as things come about we have full-time jobs on the side guys which tr- uh, full-time jobs, paying jobs that feed us. And this is on the side, but we still work full-time at this on our days off. So we're trying for you guys to continue to test systems. Those are the first four. We're gonna, we're testing so much stuff, guys. It's insane. We have so many video projects for you guys. We're trying to keep organized and just know that we're doing it for you guys. So yeah, like Rick says, uh, everybody's so supportive, but we always get a few that, that uh, don't realize that this is not... Uh, we wish we were doing this full-time and maybe someday, but... Uh, Anyways, Lab Podcast phone number hotline 509-731-3548. Hit us a voicemail. We'll play it if it's uh, content worthy and uh, um, super easy, guys. We make it easy for you guys to get a hold of us. Lawbidingbreaker.com forward slash voicemail. Leave a voicemail from anywhere in, uh, in the world right from your computer microphone for free. All right, guys, get into that free Law Abiding Biker email club, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash email club. We'll shoot you an email when we come out with new free videos and information such as the video on the systems, on these four systems that we came out. Of course, if you can't support us via Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, or a donation, um, we understand. Everybody's got a different financial situation. Of course, that's you know what keeps us going, but all right rate us in iTunes or Stitcher Radio lawbodingbacker.com forward slash iTunes or forward slash Stitcher Radio it helps bump us up in the rankings so more bikers around the world have access and can find us and join what we call the biker revolution peace out guys peace we're out like a trout